104.9. Well, we're back. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl's all a little bit, I don't know, he's a bit frustrated, he's sort of a bit sweaty and fed up today, aren't you, because of the heat. It's too much though, isn't it? He was taken out, it's he was sort of, wanted to fight. You know he doesn't use like, like a fight, I sort of like lead on him and try and rub his head. Yeah. But today he was, he was sort of leading it, he was sort of like getting a little bit... I, I, if I didn't know better, I would have said it was sexual frustration. Well I was like watching, you, Rick, if you don't want me saying I was watching, not in that way, just for watching It was sort of like he was going, oh I want to hit you, and yeah. I was thinking, does he want to hit me or does he want to do something else to me? Exactly. What were your thoughts, Carl? Exactly. I mean, I saw him sort of wrestling with you on the floor, and you clearly weren't enjoying it, but he was really Yeah, what was it. that going on? What, what's the change? Why are you suddenly sort of... Uh, what, 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 what are you trying to say? No, I'm not. I'm just saying it was weird that you suddenly... It was like you were, all. You're don't saying know. Uh, a bit... sort of a bit gay? No! Is that what you're saying? No, but what was... Suzanne accused me of that in the week. Why? For being a bit gay. She said, I'm sure you're gay. Why? Just because I was moaning about stuff. She said, oh, you're a drama queen. <laughs> 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 right, well that's- that's- what, what were you moaning about? <sighs> not just, having enough gay sex? Just, no. Just she, the, the, she didn't have a knob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going, oh, why don't you oh. get yourself a nice little knob? Yeah. I mean, can I call you Frank, <laughs> please? <laughs> Could you wear this false beard? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, um, well we'll talk about it later, it was about the Seven Wonders, I just wasn't that impressed. He <laughs> said, he said, he said, look, <laughs> well, we'd say that, yeah. Well, we got a good top show well, coming up, haven't we? But if you are a little bit, kind of, just a little bit sexually, you know, don't be afraid to, to let it out. I mean, if you want mm. us to relieve you of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's have a little bit of Maggie Mae by oh, Rod. Oh, it's some beautiful day. Like killing a Georgie. Um, that's your favourite song, isn't it? Oh. Uh, that's we weird, isn't it? Strange, isn't it? That's weird. I, 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 like to hear Rod Stewart singing about a lovely lady, please, Carl. As would I. <laughs> you can picture whatever you want. <laughs> Bit of Rod. Maggie May on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkins and Steve. Well, I, I've only just read about this and I'm quite, I don't know anything about it. This naked rambler, Steve Goff. Yeah. Uh, is he doing some kind of- he's doing a walk from Land's End to John O'Groats, is he completely nude? Yeah, he's been arrested ten times on the way, apparently. Right. It says here that Nora Goff, his mum, <sighs> she's in her seventies, she's begged her son not to walk naked from Land's End to John O'Groats. She said, I don't know where he gets this from. Certainly not me. I am and have always been quite conservative. He would never have been allowed to walk around the house without covering himself up. I wouldn't go as far as to say I'm ashamed of him, but I do not approve of what he is doing. Having said that, it's good to see him on the telly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be. It's not about anything, it's lovely. It's not like embarrassed until they're famous with exactly. it. Exactly. However, however embarrassing yeah. it is. But, um, well, my son, I can't believe my son's a serial killer. Nice to see him on the telly. <laughs> it's it. Well, it's, he looks like one. He's not, yeah. obviously, yeah. um, you know, I mean. What is he doing? I don't Steve wouldn't say he was, and he's not. He's no. just a rambler. Just, uh, but he's there, right? What's his, it, what's his motivation? He's just walking to, I don't know, just, it's just a nudist, I suppose. Right. And there's a picture in there, and, uh, Carl looked at it and he went, oh. What's the point of that? He went, well look at him, he's got shoes and socks on, he's got a rucksack on, he's got a hat on, he's not nude, he's just got his knob out. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, he's got a full beard, thinking, oh, I want to hide some skin. <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. this little chap <laughs> needs the air. Yeah. I'll pop him out all the time I can. Yeah, it really annoy me. Because it's in the, in the supplement today as well, with the, with the mirror, right? And they've done, uh, <laughs> done a bit about nudists and that. Yeah. Again. Um. <laughs> Same problems all the time. <laughs> Go on. Um, there's like an old fella sat there, just uh, How do you know he's old? Well. <laughs> Why are you looking, Carl? If way that, yeah. Looking at his face, aren't you, presumably? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying he's old and he's sat there smoking a pipe. Sure. With his sandals on. Yeah. They're quite normal, just with his, his knob out. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, but look, he always make the same mistake. He's got a little white deck chair. Yeah, yeah. If you're nudist. Don't go, don't go for white. Why? Just sitting on that, getting a bit clammy and stuff. Ah, the f <laughs> white. Don't go for white. Go for darker colours. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. How do I? But I love it. I love the fact that he's just got loads of pictures of naked men. Yeah. Walking around <laughs> with loads of pictures I'm of naked men. I'm just saying, a d dirty arse on that. <laughs> I think we've discussed the news before, though. I don't understand the impulse at all. I don't- I do find it bizarre. I mean, there's a picture there of three mm -hmm. men nude in a pub. Yeah. I d Just having a chat. Yeah. <laughs> Just having a chat! Oh, look at Carl, carry him around those the, pictures. I mean, oh, okay, fair enough walking around outside, but indoors? In a pub? Nude? 
Well, it must be a new just pub. No, it must be a new just holiday, I assume, yeah. as opposed to like the local. There uh, is though, isn't there? There's a there was a thing in Bazaar magazine the other week where sure. there was a a picture of some people. Uh, they've got an airline of their own now. What nudists? Nudes. Nude airline. So you just you can get on there. <laughs> you already start as soon as you get on. Sure. And uh, but what's the point? Well, I'd be worried just about banging against things. <laughs> You know, so to speak. Yeah, my shoes and things. Or spilling the hot co- when the waitress comes along, what the uh, hostess, and might she spill hot coffee? Yeah, that's a good point. Would, Would she have uh, to be nude? Would the stewardesses have to be I nude? I don't know. But that bit as well where they walk down the aisle and they have to check if you've buckled up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, excuse me miss, can you just- and over fifties, it's always over fifties. Right, yeah. So it'd be an old woman on the plane. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, can you just lift your left tit <laughs> up so I can see the belt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Oh. Dear. Imagine if you've got to go into the crash position. Oh God. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you see is your John Thomas. <laughs> John Thomas. As you go, as you go crashing into a mountain. So and then what if you've got an abandoned ship? Yeah. I know. Well, uh, how would they explain that? Yeah. Get onto an island. <laughs> exactly. All right. Or being picked up by you know a passing ship. <laughs> yeah. Carl. You notice they also play volleyball a lot, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, you've always mentioned that, but yeah. I thought you were joking, but they love it. Yeah. <laughs> They've said, they said, that's what they do. They get to this special holiday That camp. can only be, either they got the idea from sort of like Carry On Camping yeah. or Benny Hill, or they actually like it jiggling around as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. But is that safe? Well, I assume safe. so. You play volleyball with trousers on, don't you? I wouldn't have thought- Yeah, but there's a bit of, sus- uh, like, support there. I mean, I was watching, um, <laughs> Athletics, right, mm. the other week. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, uh, I was watching it because there's a lad who, who I went to school with, he's, like, winning gold medals and everything now right, in the right, Olympics right, and right. stuff, right? So I was looking out for him. Uh... Now, if you went to school with him, I'm assuming he's got three legs or something? No, no, he's, he's not. He's just a regular guy. He used to push me on, uh, on my go-kart, and sure. I, so I feel like I've- You've trained I was him, there yeah, from the, the, the start, beginning. training up a bit. Yeah. And, uh, watching the programme, and it was swimming in it. And, uh, I was watching that for a bit, getting a bit annoyed, cos but- that butterfly stroke. Yeah. I don't- I don't know why they do that. No, nor do I. It's just hard work. It doesn't make you go any faster than, let's say, the- that, crawl. that stroke. The, the crawl. Yeah, don't do that as- uh, that stroke on radio doesn't work, the crawl, yeah. So, uh, I was watching that, you know, that's- that's annoying. Yeah. And then they got onto the running bit, <laughs> and, uh, my mate's in this race. Yeah. Now, they do the side shot, don't they? So you can see who's in the lead. Sure. And then they do that front shot where it's absolutely pointless. The only reason to do the front shot, I I think, is to keep women interested. <laughs> because you can basically see his tackle going from left to right, <laughs> being battered all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you looking? Seriously, you had no choice. If you wanted to watch it, it was like I was interested if he was gonna win, but it's like you know. But what, why did you turn over and watch Charlie's back? Angels instead? Because I wanted to see if he won the race. But- Or flip back at the end. Just flip back to get the result if you don't- well, yeah. Or at least turn away or close well, your eyes well, well, on the front shot. No, I wasn't- I, I just- it's Suzanne weird. was happy, Suzanne was loving it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Just go to the other shot, but they were showing you the front shot <laughs> and running along there. They could have just shown the top half, but they didn't. Sure. It was there. <laughs> There's his heads moving along at 25 miles an hour. Yeah. Well, I think you're meant to see the running, the actual legs moving. It's an athletics coverage, isn't it? It's sort of like... But they don't show you a shot from behind. Did you want that? Oh, no, I didn't want that either. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds record. like you were disappointed. Yeah. Play a record. What we having? Better radio ad? Yeah, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah. Incidentally, last week, you remember, we began the show by talking about knobs. Yeah. I think we've got a bit more knob news this week. Knob is <laughs> coming up, is it? <laughs> knob news is on After the way. After Radiohead. More cock. <laughs> Radiohead and go to sleep. That's not to you. Please don't go to sleep. We've got another hour and 35 minutes of fun chat and great, great music on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Pilky, a little K-man Pilkers, little baldy twat mank whinging, a little bit bent Pilkers. <laughs> oh, there he is. There he is there. Now, Rick, you may remember that last week we opened with, um, some quality, uh, knob news. Knob news, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, 
It was, um... Hitler's, Hitler, um, <laughs> Hitler's knob. Hitler's knob was one of them. That just, that just sparked <laughs> off into a whole, uh, a whole bunch of other yeah, kind yeah. of knob-related discussions. Yeah. And I'm pleased so far to see that we're almost at the halfway mark, uh, for this first hour, and so far we've only talked about nudity and or todgers. Yeah. So, excellent work from us. Well done, lads. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Dr. Fox and the rest of the Sony, uh, award <laughs> committee listening to this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, more knob news. I don't know if there's Go a jingle on. for that, maybe. Uh, oh, you nearly had the eye out! Knob news. <laughs> knob news, excellent. This is, uh, an extraordinary story. Um, a woman tried to sue her bosses for £210,000 after finding a cooked penis in a canteen stew. Hospital cleaner Sophie, something, 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 I don't, can't really pronounce that name, was eating goulash for lunch and could not cut one of the lumps of meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can see where it's going. I've got so many questions already. I know. She picked it up and tried to chew it, but it was too tough. Then she inspected it with workmates, who all agreed it was a penis. <laughs> Imagine that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Miss Matlata said she vomited for the rest of the day, instantly became a vegetarian, <laughs> <laughs> and had to have psychiatric help. It's not known whether the organ was from a human. The case continues. Well, it can be found out, so that's one thing. Obviously, the doctors aren't confused. They're not going, I don't know, I've never seen one like it. Yeah. Uh, also, why is she in goulash? <laughs> I know. I mean, that is my first question. Why- <laughs> it, Yeah. You got your- uh, oh, lunch, oh, what do you want? I oh, no, fancy some goulash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, some gooly lash. Gooly lash, Thanks like very much it. indeed. Lancashire cockpot. <laughs> oh, brilliant. It's on the menu. Brilliant. Only five pounds fifty. Uh, um, w uh, wangers and mash. I'd love some wangers and mash, please. If you've got any knob-related puns, Knob food related puns and call XFM on 3426 <laughs> 14094. Ricky Dot at xfm.co.uk. Call Chris Miles at radio1.xfm. Mank. <laughs> yeah. Cock coke. Uh, cock a van. Cock a van. It's already done for there's you. Some, there's some less wangs and mice, cock a van, Lancashire cock pot. Uh, you know. <laughs> That's just off the top of our brains. Yeah. So, if so you've got if any you of your own, keep them to yourself, we're not interested. What do you make of that, uh, knob news? And it's in a hospital. I don't think so. Oh, oh yes, it was a hospital cleaner. You're right. Oh cleaner. God, I know how your mind's thinking already. There's been a mix-up. What kind of mix-up? I love that. What some bloke's gone in, some lesbian's gone in. What a sex change. She's got a carrot for a <laughs> cock. Yeah. What a stew steak. Stew <laughs> 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 steak. <laughs> oh, that would be great. <laughs> you're not. You're not a doctor. You butcher. It's not funny. There is some, uh, some other news, uh, whilst we're doing the knob news, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just cram this one in. Um, there was some story on some news website about some lad who, uh, wasn't happy with what, what, what he'd been given. Right. What do you mean? He had a, he had a knob? No, no, uh, no, he wanted to have a knob. He wasn't um, happy with what God had given him. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> the look what the Lord had popped downstairs <laughs> for him. <laughs> sure. And, uh... Sorry, no, wait a minute, was he a bloke who wanted it? Yeah, fella, yeah, fella. And he what, he wanted a, he, what, he didn't want a knob, or he wanted a bigger knob? Wanted a bigger one. Right, okay. okay. And, uh, cost five grand. Right. Um, and they made a mess of it. Well, what did they, how, how did they make a mess of it? Dunno, it, it came out... <laughs> ...smaller than they went in with. Well, no, what do you mean? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know all the ins and outs. <laughs> 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 oh it God! Was, uh, it's just well, like he, borrowed, a, he borrowed the money off. There's his been mouth. a slight mix-up. <laughs> he Don't... borrowed the money off his mum. I love that. <laughs> How bad is that? What do you want for your birthday, son? <laughs> yeah. yeah, interesting. Thanks, mum, for asking. A couple of bits of news as well. Hello, doctor. How did it go? Um, well, well, firstly. Don't look under the managers and don't have the goulash for lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 it, it was smaller than you went Man, in. Mum, you got five grand. Why? Just gonna fuck up. <laughs> Tell me what it's for. <laughs> you can have it if you tell me what it's for. Well, look at that. Oh, you need a bigger one. Yeah, definitely. There's the money. <laughs> yeah. On you go. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> what did he say to the doctor then? That's rubbish. I didn't read all the ins and outs. I just, like I said, I saw just it. Just look for thought, the picture. They want that picture. <laughs> <laughs> but you just thought, uh, well, thanks for it. You just thought you'd pop that one in. Thanks. Yeah, that's the, that's the end, uh, yeah. knob news extra. Yeah. Play record, Carl. Right. So if you've got any knob news, um, we've got one more show left. Send that to ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and we'll hopefully get that knob news on air next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Some Dizzy Rascal. Oh, Dizzy Rascal, yeah. He's one of the hot new English rappers. Let's play it. Loosen your hold. South. That's great, and I love that one. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Good Carl. choice, Rick, good choice. Carl, cheers, cheers, cheers. What are you thinking, Carl? What have you been doing this week? What's been going on? 
Yeah. Uh, you'd be miserable miserable because of the heat, obviously. That's getting me down. Yeah. Uh, it's just the way people wander about as well with next and out on. Yeah. Um, I'm always amazed by, uh, the men. It's just a certain breed of man. Uh, guys, sometimes it's kind of builders, mechanics, taxi drivers, van drivers, but not necessarily. Students, all sorts of guys. And you sort of watch them walking down the street. They'll be walking down the street. Girls, you know, will see in their sort of summer gear. And it's literally, you know, eyes go, look at those legs. Oh, knockers. Oh, I can't believe my luck. Oh, you know, and they're sort of talking to their mates. They're checking it. Oh, it's an arse. I can't believe it. Oh. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's like they sort of forget. There's like some kind of amnesia that sweeps over them during the, the winter. Like months. it's a surprise. Yeah. And then it's like every time summer rolls around again and girls pop, they go, I can't believe it. Where have they been? They're back. Yeah. 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 And they get so excited. Oh, excuse me now, but they got tits under their window. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Uh, Bloody hell. Oh, Brilliant. Brilliant. It's great to see them again. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets, yeah. gets the sort of October and they go, where they gone? Oh, <laughs> they happened? just don't say anything. They just like get on with it. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're yeah. reminded. <laughs> yeah. They completely forget. <laughs> yeah. For a sort of half a year. <laughs> there, was a, there was a fellow this morning, I just nipped out, having a cup of tea, reading the paper, reading that bit about nudists and that. Sure. sure. And, uh, little old fella. Must have been... 75. Okay. Walks past. Shoe socks. Sort of shorts, but because he's old, I don't think he's got like a normal pair of shorts. So we're like suit pants, but short. <laughs> <laughs> so really smart shorts. <laughs> I've never seen before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the thing is, with, with him being old and thin. Yeah. It's just. Don't do that. Don't walk around like what, that. What, the legs? Put, the legs in the back. He'd look like a little tortoise without his shell on. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to see a tortoise without its shell on. Yeah. Just to see if it would run really fast and go, this is brilliant. Just yeah. scamper along. I saw a grotesque thing. I saw, I think it's Britain's fattest man. I'm not sure. Mm. He was huge. I mean, I don't wish him any ill, but so big. It was ludicrous. He was waddling down, um, Oxford Street and he was, I mean, genuinely, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of you know, ginormous mm. people. Rick Waller, for instance, yeah. turns my stomach. This guy was twice <laughs> as big. He was extraordinary. And he sat down on a big bench and literally took up the whole space. And he, he reached into his bag, he was having his lunch, and he was eating an apple. <laughs> and I really felt like I wanted to slap him on the back and go, it's a bit late for that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's probably starting now. He's probably starting thinking that I'm gonna make a change. And imagine if you'd have said that. Yeah. And he'd have, it'd have been awful, wouldn't it? Yeah. He took, he, he sl cut it in half, put it between two slices of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I don't know how you get and that. And waited mate. for a pig to come past, yeah. shoved it in his mouth, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> just swallowed it all. I don't oh. know how he gets that big. And he was like, he'd come out to sort of soak up some of the sun, you know. Well, you look better with a tan. <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. Was he wearing loose black clothes? <laughs> he was, of course that, he was wearing That loose works black up to a point. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> then, you know, yeah. there's, 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 it's not fooling anyone. There's like vertical stripes. Yeah. To make it look <laughs> yeah. thinner. Just people just walk past and think it's night. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Carl. So, little. yeah, so, so that's, that's, you know, that's been annoying me with the weather and that. Yeah. And then, uh... I love the warm weather. Oh. Although I can't sleep at night. I had, I had two hours in front, just went and lay down in front of the window, in front of the French window, just because it was just too hot last night. But if I can sleep, I love hot weather. I love walking around when it's sunny. It's better for you. People are usually happier in hot weather. <laughs> the sun is good for you. I mean, it, it has been hot. I mean, it's 100 degrees. It's probably too hot to work, but... Mental. I can't, I can't think straight and stuff. You know your little baldy nice. head, isn't it bad for it? Because it just... Doesn't it get you... Make, make your brain a little bit hot? Well, <laughs> I... I mean, I've just got my head on show. What about the nudists? <laughs> <laughs> worry about them before you worry about me. <laughs> Right? <laughs> well, no, another, another thing that happened in the week, um, you know, I've just had builders round, sorting the kitchen out. Yeah, that. sure. Uh, so virtually skint, but another problem happens. Boiler starts playing up. Right. Right. So, uh, and you've got to have a shower in this weather, you've got to, you've got to be able to have a shower on that and freshen up and what have you. Well, I have uh, a shower every day anyway. I mean, two yeah. sometimes, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah. if you haven't got any hot water, you can't, can you? Uh, right? Cold shower's alright, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Go on. So anyway, so, uh, fella comes round. Yeah. Ninety quid. Ninety quid? Ninety quid. Um, all he did, turns up, says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just bang it. Just ninety bang quid? The, bang the boiler. That's <laughs> ninety quid. <laughs> Last time I banged a boiler, it cost me ninety quid. And there was a, there was a lot of leakage then. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, you know, I understand where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do sympathise. <laughs> but do you know, like, I, I catch him out as well, do you know, like, you know, I know they're they're up to no good yeah. and stuff. They don't earn the money. Sure. 
and he was in the bathroom, so I sort of creep up and I try and stick my head round the door to see what he's what, up to. What, when a bloke in the bathroom? <laughs> right. It's weird, weird, isn't it? So you creep up to a man in the bathroom and put your head round without seeing you? Go on, though. Fair enough. Right, do you want to go over what happened that time when we were in the pub and I go to the toilet and you're trying to get in? <laughs> what happened? Is that normal? Go on, what happened? Go on, no, it's gone, I'm not ashamed. What happened? <laughs> go on, go on, go on. Say it. <laughs> Say it. What happened? <laughs> well, don't start a story and then don't finish no, it. Or we'll on. do it later. <laughs> Tell he us was mate. he was in the he was in the cubicle and he got in the cubicle to have a piss to avoid me annoying him, right? So what I did, I got some of that liquid soap <laughs> and I just put it over and squirted on him. Then he came out going, "Look, it looks like someone's just effing jizzed on me. I've got effing jizz on me back." I, <laughs> I had to walk through Soho without me back. <laughs> I was walking to so and um, wh when was it we had to go to the, uh, when we went to the Ivy with those people? Uh, Wednesday. Uh, something like that, yeah. We had a business meeting, right, right and, uh, well, I, what, I was, we were walking out of the Ivy, it was about half eleven, and I was going down Old Compton Street, and as I got to just going past Mamma Mia, something hit me on the shoulder, I looked down, and obviously it was bird shit, but just for, <laughs> for just for a split second, I thought it looked like jizz, and I was, <laughs> I just thought, oh God, because, no, <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of woke up and I thought, right, I went, I got to wash my hands and like, get in. It well, obviously wasn't jizz, it was just, it was pigeon shit or something, right? But I, I had this pamphlet once when I was at Ulu, Terence Higgins Trust left this pamphlet and it was all stuff like safe sex and it was stuff like, <laughs> it, honestly, I swear, it said things like, you don't have to have four. <laughs> In the course, it said you can do lots of other things with your lover, like <laughs> <laughs> it said, like um, <laughs> like coming to some fruit, e.g., a melon. <laughs> it, it, it says um, with friends, um, just come on the back of one of them, right? And then this is the bit that made me think, and I thought, oh my god, when I looked down, sort of my shoulder, it says, <laughs> come out of a window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on any passing celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, oh God, I'll get that pamphlet. If anyone's got that pamphlet, it was brilliant. So, uh, yeah. Good, right, well, um, let's play a record. Do you reckon Noel Edmonds <laughs> did stuff like this on his show? He's back. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh. Smith and Ask on XFM 104.9. <laughs> before the before that we had uh, we had uh, spunky news <laughs> spunky news coming yeah. up monkey news <laughs> that's the sort of linked this is uh, dr fox is no better than this no you must see we're getting better now yeah. have you got any uh, other news there carl uh well you were just talking about uh bird muck <laughs> <laughs> what a classy <laughs> show this is <laughs> <laughs> yeah Bit of it, um, I imagine someone just having a barbecue tuned into this. Yeah. Can you turn the imagine. radio off? He's talking about coming out of windows again, <laughs> darling. It's putting me off my sausages. Now, while I was walking down, down the street and this pigeon, sparrow, whatever, uh, <coughs> did its thing and it landed on my ear <coughs> and, uh, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, I thought, well, I'm not gonna wipe it off. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Cos I don't want to get it on my hands. Right. <laughs> so I thought, I'd, I thought I'd leave it till I get home. So it's probably about. <laughs> so you went to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I met some friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got yeah. Went, went, on, went on the pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it was best man. So after the speeches, <laughs> yeah. um, that is brilliant. Oh. No, uh, it, it was on there for a, I don't know half an hour or something like that. Brilliant. Uh, get home and uh, get did it not kind of slowly ooze down your neck? No, no, it's fa fairly hard. Right, and um, <laughs> it sort of corroded me. Ear. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking God. about? Why know. did you leave it there, though? Why not just wipe it off with something? I, 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 I can anything. walk round pop, with pop in a news agent and buy some tissues. Yeah. But then I look stupid. What? what <laughs> where is the bird's muck on your ear? Brilliant. They're all, they're all wearing that now. But no, what, what is it's, it the heat? It's alkaline, no, it's al really strongly alkaline, isn't it? Or is it acidic? I don't know. Maybe someone knows. Is bird yeah. mark acidic or alkaline? But it's corrosive, yeah. Weird, yeah. isn't it? Weird. Weird, it, isn't it? It didn't seep into your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, 
Do you want to do, uh, do you want to set up Songs of Phrase? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, if you've not heard the show before- I thought then... we weren't doing this this week. I, I thought, thought we, we weren't. No, we'll, we'll do it once, right? And then next week's the last one, so we'll do Rockbusters. Leave, leave that might out. be the last one ever, depending on whether Carl decides to come back yeah. in October or not. Exactly. Oh, I'm bored of it. I told you I'm bored of it. Why are you bored with it? I get bored quick with stuff. Yeah. I told, I told Suzanne the other night, I'd look she was. I haven't got, not ri got rid of her yet. She's, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Things. You put, you put on her soft music though <laughs> first, didn't you? You didn't just like, start getting that around right yeah, you, you, know, you, you, you know you're a very lucky girl. Sorry? Well, I usually get bored with you and that. Yeah. Oh, do you like you haven't pissed off? Yeah. Do you want all the champagne or what? Well, she was annoyed the other night. What's that on your ear? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Pigeon shit, aren't it? We're walking to the pictures, right? To go yeah. and see uh, Bruce Almighty. Sure. Why? And, uh, just something to say, innit? Yeah. So you were you were trying to sneak in the back. <laughs> so uh, on the way, cutting across Leicester Square, uh -huh. and uh, those fellas who sell roses, he comes over. Do you want one? Do you want one? So don't do that. She's allergic to them, right? So so we'd go away. Yeah. She got all annoyed about that. Because she's not allergic to them. Well, she's not allergic now, but I, I, they're about three quid each. she <laughs> 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 But the we, point of that, guys, is not that she really wants a rose, it's that you're willing to spend three pounds on her. Taking us to the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> How much was that? That was eight quid each. Mm. Did you pay for it, though? But Did didn't you, you ever- if I- if I know you, you had her dressed up as a small child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and my son, please. Or you've made her sit on your shoulders and wear a long coat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, listen, songs of phrase, then. <laughs> you oh. paid for her to go in and then you went and had a pint while she watched it. <laughs> yeah, there's no point in both of us seeing it, but tell me about <laughs> it, Tell me what you? it's like. Oh, right, songs of phrase. So let's explain what songs of phrase is. You do it. Okay, oh, really? Uh, if you think that Carl is bored with life, then you will be even more bored once <laughs> you've heard this particular quiz. The gist of it is that Carl has taken a well-known phrase well, or saying- Well, no, stop me there. Not oh, a well-known phrase. Some that he said once. On this show. Yeah, probably. And he's somehow com uh, compiled together a number of different songs which have somehow <laughs> built up that particular phrase or sentence. Um, if it's anything about Chinese people, Philip Bailey will be involved. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay, let's hear it then, Carl. Right. Alright, I don't I, know what that I is. I don't know what that was. This is appalling. I don't know this what is appalling. That is. Carl, Carl, I do not know what that is. What is the phrase? I just was saying last week about everyone's raving about Galileo. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. No, no, they're not. No, that sounds like not. a sort of B-side from yeah. the Buggles. Everyone's raving about Beyonce and uh, Robbie Williams. Yeah. They're not. They're not. They're, people they're going pop what, idol. What are you into? Galileo's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Forget it. Forget it. No. <laughs> Placebo, song for Carl there. That's special needs on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We were doing songs of phrase. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh god. So what is this phrase? What is the phrase, Carl? Last week we were talking about Galileo. Right. And I just was saying, <laughs> years ago, I can't remember now, when was it? When was he doing his thing? End of the 16th century, I think. Right. And he was messing about, trying to find out about speed of light or something, is it? No, he did lots of- he did lots of stuff, Galileo. All I was saying is, Gravity, back then, yeah, surely yeah. everyone was saying, stop messing with that, make us a telly. You know what I mean? There was other things that people would have been happier with, sure, back then. Like they, yeah. Like so know. the phrase is- the phrase exactly is what? The well-known uh, phrase is what? Uh, Galileo, uh, well it goes like this, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So it's Galileo. Stop S talking to me talking about, about science. science. Make, Make me, me television. television. Make me television. Yeah. So you email in with with the bands and that. Brilliant. <laughs> right. Let's uh, that, that, that is rock bottom. Of course I mean, it the, is. the well known phrase being Galileo. Stop talking to me about science. Make me television. <laughs> As a well-known <laughs> phrase, is the one of the weirdest things I've ever, forget jizz out of windows and things like that. That is the weirdest thing I've heard on radio as a competition. Can we have that one next week? <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Well, here, here are the prizes. If you, if you think, Rick, that the, if you think the quiz has hit rock bottom, wait, wait till I tell you these prizes. No, brilliant. Um. Oh. 
I know that, um, we're very much pushing new music on XFM and it's an alternative music yeah, station, yeah, yeah. so you'll be pleased that we're giving away, now that's what I call Music 55, <laughs> featuring the likes of Busted and, uh, Daniel Beddingfield. Brilliant. Uh, you really know how to cater to our audience, don't you? The best dance album in the world, that includes, um, DJ Sammy, Scooter, <laughs> and, uh, Liberty X on there, <laughs> so I look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, this is not so bad, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, uh, a live DVD of a, <coughs> pardon me, a performance, uh, at some, <coughs> pardon me again, but, <coughs> anyway, <coughs> that basically sums up the prizes. So uh, I won't tell you the rest; they're all monotonous. But uh, anyway, <coughs> I think those crisps, Rick, have gone down the wrong way. <laughs> or, although I was eating goulash earlier. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, uh, uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. So anyway, yeah, that's that's some of the prizes, <laughs> and you can win some tat so if you can identify these artists. The well-known phrase: Galileo starts all me about science, make me television. Television. Just appalling. But easy this week, I think. I those, yeah. Play a record, Carl. I mean, it's ridiculous. Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. The pictures. The pictures on XFM 104.9 holiday song. He's talking about, um, people coming round and just banging the boiler and charging 90 quid. Um, I think it was last Christmas. We had a dripping tap, right? And, uh, it started off just dripping a little bit. And then, after a couple, I thought, you know, we'd get that sorted out. We couldn't actually turn the tap. Couldn't, it was just solid where the, the, the washer had gone. And then, uh, over Christmas, like, like as before Christmas, um, it just started flowing. It was just like on. And I was thinking, this is terrible. It was terrible worse. It was the hot tap. And, uh, of course everything, the caretaker had gone away, everything had been closed down. So I called out an emergency plumber. Christmas. Yeah. Like, he couldn't get it to turn the tap off. Right? So, um, he was trying and trying. And in the end he said, well what I could do is I could just squash the pipe. Right? Cut the pipe, squash it, and then you could change the whole thing. I went, yeah, whatever. Right? Because I can't have this, I guess. So, uh, he said, I've got to go to the van. And he got this tool, came up to squash the pipe. It was only a young lad, right? Wasn't strong enough. So I had to help him squash the pipe. Right. He squashed the pipe, cut it, put a little nozzle on it, you know, just to seal it, right? And uh, I was 180 quid. 180 quid? And I wanted to say, surely that's half mine. Yeah. I helped it, and I was sort of being sarcastic. When Johnny was there, I was going, how much was that tool you, he went, it was only about nine quid. I went, pays for itself, isn't it? Yeah. And I was going, could I get one of them? He was going, yeah, get them anywhere. Oh, obviously, yeah. didn't it? Yes. And then he went, I wrote a check for nine quid, and he went, oh, I didn't charge you for the nozzle on the end. I went, no. He went, I said, how much is that then? He said, two fifty. So I said, I'll give you cash for that. Two pounds fifty. <laughs> 182 pounds 50. So he hadn't even really sorted the problem out. But what can you do? What can you do? You know, yeah. he wasn't ripping me off. That's the prices. Yeah. He's not going to go, I'll tell you what, mate, because you helped me, uh, call it quits. <laughs> yeah. Just buy me lunch. <laughs> it's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. My mate was locked out of his, uh, flat once. Um, and he went out and shut the door behind him, and that was it. And he'd looked through a letterbox, and he could see his keys, mm -hmm. right? Phoned a locksmith, says, look, can you come round? I can see my keys, right? I just have to go out, and he went, well, yeah, but I don't, that doesn't matter. He said, I'm going to try it, it's 90 quid. And he went, 90 quid? He went, but I can see the keys. He went, yeah, I can get them for you. And he went, and my man said, you're going to come round, you're going to charge me 90 quid, and you're going to scoop my keys up with a bent coat hanger. And the locksmith said, have you got a bent coat hanger, mate? It's brilliant. But it's a fair point, isn't it? It do you know is what I mean? a fair point, that's it. And what, what can you do? <laughs> yeah. I'd have gone, ha, thanks for the expert advice, and then asked the neighbour for a bent coat hanger. And they went, well, we'll call it under quid. <laughs> yeah. But that's more expensive than the locksmith. Well, yeah, because you're going to illegal traders. <laughs> exactly. We've got no licence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got to yeah. buy a little bit more in case we get fined. <laughs> exactly. But that's, yeah. that's what was going on when, you know, the, the fellow was round the other day fixing the boiler in the bathroom. Just wanted to make sure that he was, that he was working on it because it all went quiet in there. Mm. He had the door shut. I'm trying to... Have a little quick, quick sort of peep, <laughs> seeing if he's doing anything. And I push the door. <laughs> it's like this sounds. But just pushing the door slowly, and he's going, "Don't come in." <laughs> he's like, "What are you doing?" Well, what was he doing? Don't know. But then he's like, three down, probably doing a crossword again. <laughs> that's that's what annoys me. The the way that you know it's all secret. You're not coming in, and you, you hear the odd bang now and again. He's probably sat there, crossword, three down, giving it the old. 
Just now and again. <laughs> With his foot. Just, just kick just the- annoying. Yeah. How much annoying. did he charge you? 90 quid. It's just under 90 quid. Yeah. Yeah. And all he said was, you know, give it a bang. If you don't work again, give it a bang. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> is that an air block and they just like, what is it? I don't know. It's not that complicated. You wouldn't think a boil is that complicated. It's not like understanding, you know, how uh, a fast breeder works or a computer. It's a big lump of metal without water in it. How, how can we not know how that- yeah. We were discussing yesterday, me and Glenn were trying to work out how a fridge works. Right. It's pretty cool. Magic? It is the magic comes down the electricals into the frozen peas. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Can't still talk about- I, I know it's something to do with the- the hydrofluorocarbons are, can exist at much lower temperatures without freezing. So when they enter the fridge, sort of under pressure, as they flow round, because the, the- the pressure goes down, they take energy from the- the it's, per records, it's perhaps a discussion to have in the car, records, but not on the air. Player records. I still can't figure out- I've never quite understood how a plane stays in the air. It always unnerves me when I'm in a plane. Turning a tap on, getting water. <laughs> I'm basically gonna go, <laughs> Gargo's walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's a bit of science for you. Go on. Right. Um, read the other day. Yeah. If you dug a big hole, right. Oh, God. Started digging, say in, uh, wherever, the Trafalgar Square, right. Yeah. Uh, you dig a big hole and you keep digging. Yeah. And you go right through the earth. Right. Out to the other side. Yeah. So you, you're somewhere in Australia or something, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you go back to come back again, come back to London. Right. Stand next to the hole, jump in it. Apparently, you can jump through the world in 42 minutes. <laughs> it's interesting. But then I was thinking, will you fall? And then when you come out the other end, would you fall back again? Well, yeah, you would, wouldn't you? What would happen is you'd accelerate. Uh, ten meters per second, per second, to the center of the earth. And you but you'd have, down. but you know, you'd, but but you'd have such inertia, you'd nearly go as far out the other end before it was like a bungee jump. So you'd nearly get as far as the other end, and then you'd go back again, and you'd keep going until back and forth, getting getting further and further away from making it until you went da -da 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 -da, sort of back and forth in the center, and then you'd stay still in the center. Have you drilled a hole through the earth? <laughs> get in touch. Email xfm.co.uk <laughs> and just let us know how you got on. Did you get to the other side? Did you get to Australia? Did you buy one of those funny cork hats? Did how you does, see Paul Hogan? How does a fish work? <laughs> <laughs> Darkness growing on me, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I bored Carl, I lost him, didn't I, in a little conversation. Yeah, there. you were talking about quantum physics, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, I was just explaining what a black hole was, because we were talking about like that as well last night. And just halfway through, he just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> put his headphones on. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, it's the, thing, it's the thing about Carl is he speaks with such authority about things that he thinks he knows about. Monkeys. And when you try, yeah, and when you try to explain to him about stuff, you know, he thinks, he goes, no, of course ghosts exist. And yeah. you try to explain to him why it's conceivable they don't. Ah, no, no. He can't, he can't be bothered with that. Yeah, you? He's, you did all your learning at about twelve, didn't you? Yeah, but I'm still picking bits up now. <laughs> <laughs> Said without irony. <laughs> oh, brilliant. What have you learned recently? Anything interesting recently you've learned? Darwin. That's why I was asking you about him. Right. Yeah, just, Darwin. Uh, we know what he did, do you? I don't know what he did. I just read the other day that they've they've got a treatment for whatever illness he had. I thought it was a bit late. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that saying that to his family? What did Darwin do? What did Darwin do? You I don't know. know. You were um, you were just trying to explain it to me, but I'm, I'm busy doing stuff, aren't I? I can't take it all in whilst I'm sorting the ads out, putting CDs in. You know what I mean? Well, he, he, Ticking off the knob news. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he formulated the theory of evolution based on natural selection. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but wait, wait, though. Do you, you think that's good? Do you think he's- do you think that was well done? You're impressed with that? Cos you're not impressed with things like, you know, you famously said, uh, um, Newton, so it said gravity, but it was already there. If we'd have been floating around, it'd been a problem, we weren't, so keep out of it. That's what you said. You said, Einstein, I've never used EMC squared in my life, but the bloke who invented the video recorder, I watch one a week. <laughs> so I wonder if you're impressed by Darwin formulating, I think, the most important scientific theory since, uh, Newton's laws. Has it made a difference? Or, or whatever he said, 
would it have happened anyway? You can't do that. You're not allowed to say that. You can't say, oh, well done, I'd have found it eventually anyway. You can't do that. You've got to give people their due, do you know what I mean? But, but now it's difficult to find stuff because there's less to find out now. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's not uh, a competition. But on what scale? On what scale are you lo looking at? Why do you mean there's less to find out? Well, now, I mean, they, they're bringing stuff out that... <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just... The iPod. Well, yeah. <laughs> sure. Didn't see the point in that, no. the iPod. Do you know, he actually listed the three songs he'd ever want to carry around with him. I can't remember what they were. What are the three what songs you'd put Killing on your Killing the iPod? Georgie. Killing the Georgie, yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? Probably have, uh, Elvis in the ghetto. Right. Yeah. Moving. Living in the city. Stevie do you know why, like, do you know why that? Because that's, that's like a little film to him. Yeah. That's three songs where there's a little story. He knows the ending. Yeah. But it's someone singing it to him. <laughs> a <laughs> little- just, just put them on it. A th how many songs can I hold? Well, seven and a half thousand. Seven thousand. Put that on. Seven and a half thousand times. Sure. Well, you don't need to, do you? I mean, that is like that joke. The, the, the wish. Put, uh, m imagine putting on seven and a half thousand You know that, that joke about- you got three wishes. It says a never-ending bottle of Guinness, and you go second wish. You gotta have two more of these. Yeah, like, you don't need to put them on seven and a half thousand times, do you? No, you don't. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> never yeah. mind, Carl. Never mind. Uh, answers rushing in. We should point out for the quiz. Most of them agreeing that uh, it's pointless. Um, some people <laughs> have called it it's songs of phrase. Of course, um, some people have referring to it now as songs of arse. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, more than appropriate, but you'll be pleased to know that it's ending this week, and next week we've got the return of the even more pitiful Rockbusters. For the last one. That's back for the last one. We'd perhaps also need your petitions to Carl. If you want us to stay on the air, then you need to petition Carl, giving good reasons why he should stay, why this show isn't boring, or rather why he shouldn't be bored by it. I mean, you're bound to be bored as listeners, but obviously, uh, he's running out of steam now. Why you, what, what, what are you fed up with? You're just fed up with, uh, in general, I I mean, you want your Saturdays back, do you? Just want a bit of a life back, that's all. But, but you don't do anything with your life you when you've got it. Why don't you do this instead of, like, your day job? Can't. It's more important than my day job, innit? That's what earns the company money and that. Know what I mean? Well. So. What you do, why don't you do a regular show then? Sack someone who's, you know, quite well, frankly not putting the way. I've done that. I did that years ago. What done do you mean? It, done it. I told you, I've done a lot of stuff. Boxing. Done. <laughs> tick. Dancing. Done. No, you turned out. The place was shut. <laughs> yeah, but dancing? When did you do dancing? That's when he, when he went and said, I want to do dancing, and he went along to the, the place, and it was shut, and that was it. And he said, <laughs> I didn't do it anymore. That's not doing it, is it? Boxing, he had a fight with one lad, then the lad beat him up, and he didn't go again. <laughs> Oh dear, it's pathetic. Well, anyway, yeah, so this uh, is basically our penultimate show. Next week's the, the final, and uh, we're all looking forward to that enormously. Yeah. But uh, that may be it forever then, and uh, this, this, you know, all for one, all, all, you know, one for all, all for one, the Three Musketeers, gone forever. Yeah. I, for one, will be pleased. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll have to get some of these taped, because I like coming in sort of, um, you know. Incidentally, Rick, don't be afraid to nick as many CDs as you see fit on that last show. I, that, people have already nicked them. No, I know, but I just mean, take whatever you want. Is that four non blondes is still there, isn't it? I think it's still there. Because I don't want that to be nicked. Yeah. And I got a feeling, um, there's, because I don't think there's any Smiths in the library, but there's quite a lot of Gina G. Really? <sighs> what? What was that sigh for? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. What? Ooh. Play a record. I... Monkey News is on the way. Plus the results. This isn't radio. Keep t you've got to keep talking or playing music. Play some music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Art of Gold by Neil Young on XFM one hundred four point nine. Um, Pop Idol, of course, begins this evening. I know you're looking forward to it. Really. Yeah, love it. It's love always it. a joy, isn't it? especially those early rounds with the. Uh, the, the mentors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are always extraordinary. Um, that's the only reason I watch. I mean, I can't be bothered with the later contest. It's just watching the freaks for the first couple of weeks. Uh it's an absolute uh, pleasure. Yeah, I sort of like watching the judges. They're good as well. Oh, the judges are good, yeah. I like yeah. the fact they, they they've got their little shtick, you know, the, the special jokes they've obviously written or just waiting to get them in. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. great. But I love like when Pete Waterman cries as well. Does he cry? Sometimes if he's moved by it. <laughs> he's better than bloody Bobby Dallin. <laughs> like it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rosie Ribbon made him cry. <laughs> He just wells up and then <laughs> like that. that's good. I like that. He yeah. talks a lot of old ass, doesn't he, Pete Waterman? I sort of quite like oh, him. Oh, I don't know. I find him irritating. Well, it's like yeah. he genuinely thinks he's up there with Lennon and McCartney. That's one of the great kind of pop Svengalis of his time. Yeah, and you know, you I don't know. You wrote songs for Sunita. Well, don't yeah, be that. Let's not let's not knock him. There's foxes on there. 
True. No, no, Dr. Fox is a genius. <laughs> and obviously he can step in if there's any medical emergencies. Um, Rick Waller, you'll be pleased. Now, I'm a, obviously, as you know, I'm a huge Rick Waller fan. Um, not only has he got a great singing voice, but he's, he really is a picture, mm. <laughs> isn't he? Um, no, I know it's a bit harsh, I've said it before, but I d he does, um, he does make me a little sick to the stomach when I look at Rick Waller. Um, and I, to be honest with you, it's his own fault. You know, he, got, he went in Celebrity Fit Club, he had a chance to sort things out, and his attitude was wrong, and, um, he didn't trim down, and, uh, he's, for want of a better phrase, a bloater, mm. and slightly grotesque. But, you know, he's in the paper this week saying that it was all because of his image, he didn't fit the stereotype of what pop stars should look like, blah, 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 blah. Well, he's disgruntled <laughs> by this, he's got a great singing voice. Um, well, he has got a great singing voice. But the point is this, Rick, the point is this, since the days of Elvis, since the days of Bing Crosby... He's not as bad as Elvis. <laughs> no, but you're a star because you have to have the whole package, the voice, yeah, the it's... sex appeal, everything. We know yeah. how it works, kids buy it, it's pop music, that's what pop music is. Mm. You know, if you want to be uh, a big fat bloater, you've got to at least be as good as Barry White. He isn't. Or Pavarotti. Or Pavarotti. And so anyway, he set up a, um, he set up an organisation. He's already got a band, you know, he's got so a So you're saying, get over it, the world should revolve around looks. But, well, no, I'm saying pop music, that's what pop music is. I mean, this kind of obsession with, he should get a chance, but you know? But not on record. No, I know, but, um, be a he session might... back, be, be a backing singer. The point yeah. is, this kid wants to be a star. He wants to be a star, doesn't he? Yeah. That's the point. He doesn't want to sing and make a couple of records. He just wants to be a star. He I'd, wants to be I'd, a I'd have thought that's that's the real rub. That actually he's not being truthful with himself. Yes. He doesn't just want to make beautiful music and sing well. He he wants to be you know carried around on a sedan chair and adored. Imagine that. I know. Imagine I mean, the he'd have to have people. a lot of money to pay for the entourage that can carry yeah, him. Yeah, four I elephants know. needed. But he's got a, a company now. He set it up with his dad. It's a management company. It's called Star Search. And basically, he's hoping to break the fickle industry, um, you know, uh, expectations. And so, if you're a bit of grotesque, <laughs> if you're a freak of some kind, if you're someone that Carl, you know, would be impressed by or, um, you know, alarmed by, then you can get in touch with Rick, and he can put you in there. Women with beards. Little midget fellas, whatever, whatever. It does not fit the usual should norm. We, should we cut along? <laughs> I'm thinking the three of us next week. We won't, oh, have, we won't have much to do after next week. Mm. You know, Ricky's got a bit of a singing voice on him. <sighs> I'm learning to play "Blowing in the Wind" on the keyboard by Bob Dylan. Yeah, so I can master that. I don't know what you can do. You, oh, can, you dance. can dance. You can dance. You can dance, can't you? You know that you've done it. You've done dancing, so <laughs> exactly. It's like you little know. donkey. We'll have a hit at Christmas. <laughs> Perfect. I'm good at that. What were you meant to be playing when you did Little Donkey in the play? Drums to We Three Kings. But you just busted life, didn't you? Done that. We're just donkey. talking about looks and stuff, right? <laughs> Always. Because, um, you know, it, it sort of cheeky freak of the week, we did that and I stopped mm. doing it. Sure. Cause it was upsetting a few people. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a thing <laughs> on the website the other day about Elephant Man, yeah. right? Just keeping up to... You know, up on the news, what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they did Drunky a, news. They did, they did a thing about him and what it looked like if his head wasn't messed up. Yeah, yeah. And they made a little picture for him. Was he quite good looking? Not bad looking, but he can't use it. It's not like you can't you can't put it on a passport. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, and the fact that he's been dead for several <laughs> years. Yeah. No, but they also do that sort of thing for people who are alive. They say this is what you look like. So you can't use it for that. Yeah. You can't use it. Online. Isn't that like, that's sort of like rubbing it in, though, isn't it? Really, it is a bit. Yeah. yeah. Unless they said good news, you were ugly anyway. <laughs> yeah. To be quite honest, <laughs> you, you wouldn't have pulled it. You, you didn't look like a. If you were symmetrical, you weren't a looker. <laughs> you oh. couldn't use it on a little dating agency picture. This is what I look like. Yeah. yeah. This, is what, this is what I would have looked like. And they phone up and go, I'm intrigued. What do you mean would have looked like? <laughs> well, I see you, as we said, seven o'clock. How will I recognise you? I'll be eating buns. Yeah, look for the giant cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a coat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love the fact that you're keeping up, keeping up to date with what the elephant man might have looked like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is amazing. Carl's news is largely what's happening in around, around 1880. Yeah, yeah, or might, what might have happened exactly, yeah. around 1880. No, but it's yeah. sad though, did you watch that thing in the week, that What Are You Staring At program? I didn't know, I couldn't face it. it did, I know what you mean, it was about people who'd had unfortunate deformities and Yeah, stuff. yeah, and it was, it was really sad, I suddenly felt bad about, you know, some of the stuff we'd yeah. talked about and what have you, cos it- <laughs> Just say something like that, that's quite a nice thing to say. I suddenly felt bad about some of the things we talked about. Should we go over what we've discussed today? What? What subjects have we brought up today? How can you feel sorry about things like that when we're still doing it? 
No, well, I'm, ju I'm just saying, you know, you have a laugh and that, but then you see a program about it and you go, oh. What, you realise they're real people you're talking about? Yeah. When do you ever forget that? When do you ever forget that when you bring up these <laughs> cheeky freaks of the weeks, or when we talk about Rick Waller, that <laughs> there's not a real person on the other end uh, thinking about it? Yeah, but sometimes it's hard because they don't look like real people. <laughs> Play a record! Don't snag off Rick Waller. <laughs> that girl was on with a big head. <laughs> like Bow Selector. We played some, uh, Dizzy Rascal earlier. And, and that was wicked! <laughs> exactly, and he's the new kind of, uh, mm. the kind of London rap sensation. Yeah, yeah. But let's not forget credit to the nation from 1994. They're Teenage Sensation. Now, Steve. Whatever happened to MC Fusion, he got a lot of bad press at the time, people didn't respect him, but I'm listening to that now, I think it was bloody brilliant. Yeah. Alright? And crucial, isn't it? <laughs> Exactly, adverts. <laughs> Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Stephen Merchant, and that little, this little bald head at a mank over there is Carl Pilkington. cock a -leaky soup? cock a -leaky soup is fine. That was one from Nick. Thanks for that, Nick. Yeah. Is it Nick? I was referring to the woman who chewed on a knob in a goulash. <laughs> exactly. People, if, you've, uh, if you've just tuned in, you've missed that there is Yeah. We I mean, still don't know why she was eating goulash. I've got a rash, look, come up on my arm, look at that. Brilliant, fascinating, thanks for that. That's from rubbing his head, getting him in headlock, and it's, uh, have you got some on your hair? Cos look at that, that's like a heat rash. What are you washing your hair with? It's have you still got that bird shit behind your ear? What is that? That's really worrying, isn't it? It's like how, like, the body changes over many years of sort of <laughs> certain things. Yeah. It's like your body changes to protect yourself from the sun and what have you. Yeah. My head, just got used to being rubbed. <laughs> yeah. It's reacting now. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's, that's a defence mechanism, is it? Yeah. Uh, right, I see. All right. Look at that, that's horrible. Anyway. Um, You've got something on your air, you know. Monkey news? Well, I was gonna say, the winner. I don't think anyone cares. Oh, come on, it, uh, someone got all of them, didn't they? Well, okay, play it again then. This was Songs of Phrase, we did the The well-known phrase is Galileo, stop talking about science, make me television. <laughs> The most convoluted, banal quiz on any radio station ever. I mean, I'm including Moyles, Chris Evans, do you know what I mean? Simon Bates. That's worse than anything they ever did. Apparently, uh, Channel 5 have bought the rights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, what were the answers, Carl? We had Queen in there, Altered Images, Thomas Dolby. Yeah. Uh, Beatles, Aretha Franklin, and, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Well, extraordinarily, Tracy and John Burton from Colchester and Essex got all of those right. Why they would want the prizes, I've no idea, but good luck to them, they can enjoy those, uh, at some point. God bless. Okay, Monkey News? Do you want a bit? Yes, please. Play jingle. the jingle. This rash is weird. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey News! Right. Uh, right, they were filming a... A documentary, right? This telly company. Yeah. Doing a documentary. Who? Which one? Which one? Which I one? I don't know. No, right. What was the documentary about? About monkeys. Yeah. Uh, where was it? Where Africa. was it? Right. Where, when was this? I haven't got a date. Okay. Recently, though, since the advent of television, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, a bit of extra monkey news if you, <laughs> if you want it. Okay, always. Do you know the, um. Monkey news extra. Go on. Do you know the Halford's ads? Halfords ads. I don't think so. No, what happens? Halfords. They've, they've, uh, you know, they sell nuts and bolts and stuff. Right. Uh, they were using monkeys in the ads. Okay. Um. Yeah. And what, what happened? Pocket. Don't they sell bikes, Halfords? Well, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> Bicycles and, and motorbike stuff in that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so they're using monkeys in the ad, what happened? <laughs> I can't handle it. What? I can't do this. Look what? at him. Look at him. <laughs> I don't care what he's doing. And it, well, basically, right, they've, uh, they, uh, there was a load of hassle because they were using these monkeys in this alpha advert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what happened? Get to the point. It turned out it wasn't a problem because they were mechanics in the first place. Well, they were monkey mechanics. Yeah. What are you talking about? Mental. What are you talking about? That's not a story. Well, anyway, listen, let's get, let's get back on <laughs> to They were mechanics in the first place. <laughs> Right, listen. Right, so they're making this documentary. Right? And, uh, they stumble across a, a little gang of, uh, little gang- <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Just- 
Get on with it, please. Little, little gang of monkeys. That's yes. the first time I've ever laughed, don't hear that. <laughs> I know. Well, brilliant. What do you want, a cake? <laughs> Come on! Can we play a song? Oh. I don't understand what is wrong with you, you freak. It's making me laugh. <laughs> Just tell us the story! Alright then, alright. <clears throat> so anyway, right, so there's this, this documentary being made. They found a little gang of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> right, play a song. I don't know what's going on here. I apologise. Got a high to level way. According to the Beatles on XFM 104.9, I'm working with me, Steve Merchant. Right, Carl, come right, on. Where, Monkey where, where news. Where Everyone's we? composed. The jingle, please. Oh, chimpanzee that. Monkey news. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Right. <laughs> right, where were we? We were just start again. There's some people making a documentary. <laughs> For what? Okay. For making a documentary in, uh... In the jungle and that. Right. Stumble across a little gang. <laughs> okay, okay, come on! Alright. Um A little gang of monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! So the camera crew are there filming it. Yes. Everything's going normal. It's nothing all nothing yeah. odd about it. Okay. <laughs> they don't they're not running a restaurant, they've not got any barber shops, <laughs> nothing. No. Just regular monkeys going about their business, yeah. So anyway. Uh mm. the what what normally happens is the monkeys Stick with the partner. What <laughs> 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 did you want? They, they don't sort of sleep around and that. Once they oh, find, right, the, they were, once they they find the girlfriend or the boyfriend or whatever, yeah. they, st they stick with them, right? <laughs> okay. But anyway, they were watching this one, right? And, uh, it's, it's going around a bit, sleeping around. Oily. And it was getting fatter. <laughs> they thought, this is a bit odd. Yeah. Right? So, uh, followed it round. <laughs> and, uh, see it having it away. Turns out, little prostitute. <laughs> 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 ah! Oh God! It's a little monkey prostitute. It was getting fatter because it was charging them bananas. <laughs> <laughs> what a load of old rubbish! It's <laughs> charging them bananas. <laughs> what was it? A boy or it was a woman? A little woman monkey. <laughs> ah! That's the most extraordinary monkey news I've ever heard. Oh, that is genius! Has this documentary been televised? <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's been on yet. No. no. And that's all the information you've got? <laughs> yeah. And, and is that, that's, um, that's one banana for everything? Now, half a banana is for- Just oral. Uh, a poor job. Right. Um, if you want full-blown, uh, monkey sex, <laughs> it is two and a half bananas. <laughs> sure. Sure. So, uh, Let's just play a song. Okay. <laughs> Let's just play a- Alright, well this is our penultimate show, which we'll be back next week. We're gonna make it a barnstormer, I'm sure, lads. I want 100% behind it, 110% next week. Alright, none of this giggling, none of this infantile giggling, okay. like two schoolboys. Right. Alright, we're gonna come back, we're gonna have some quality monkey news next week, we're gonna have all kinds of treats, I would thought. Okay. Some great prizes. All right. Are yeah. we okay? Yeah, we best show. Let's make next week the best show ever. Good luck. If you miss it, then you miss out. We're ending with a track from a couple of years back, I think it was 92, 93. Uh, Dinosaur Junior, start chopping. Play that. Start playing. Forget start chopping, start playing. Alright. Alright. See you next week. Yeah. Five past one then, already, over Saturday. So I'm Ricky Gervais. That was Placebo, yeah? With special needs, which brings me to my next point. With me, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, there he is. Steve Merchant. 104.9. That's it. We're back then. Well, for one last time. Well, it's certainly the end of the season. We're away for at least, you know, Two months we're doing the office special, um, and possibly forever, depending on whether Carl decides he wants to carry on with this. It's because, I mean, we do this for fun. We don't need to do this. We don't need to do this for, you know, uh, um, money. Obviously not. The kind of money you're earning, Rick, you do not need to do. This. I don't need right. to. It's quite honestly beneath me. Yeah. You know, we don't need to do it to further our career because it's embarrassing Didn't being your on XFM. And say, do not even bother cashing those XFM checks. It's I not worth your while. No, it's not. It's not. It, yeah. yeah, the time it took to sign them, <laughs> exactly. it, it, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't worth it. Um, so we do this basically to ridicule Carl. On a, on a large sort of platform, I say large platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no other, no other radio station I mean, will it's, have it's us. probably the same as standing up in McDonald's. I imagine so. Uh, but uh, but over yeah. lunchtime though. Yeah, yeah. Um, or so when uh, it's just the cleaning staff mopping <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and if Carl doesn't come back, he's breaking up the uh, three-way partnership He's very much forever. Sting, isn't he? Um, yeah. In about, what, 1986, 87? Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, he's gonna go off and sort of make some quite poor sort of jazz-inflected White man's soul, yeah. and leaving us to you know, go about our business, play pizza places, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
No. Yeah, well, I'm going to go into sort of so, maybe writing Say, Dad, parts. why can't I be in the CIA? <laughs> yeah. You don't know anything about it. You're a drummer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, do you think anyone cares? I wouldn't have thought so. Because I think if someone was interested in having some good chat and some great laughs, they'd spend mm. more time with their friends. Yeah. Or listen to another radio or station. Or listen to a decent radio show. Or I think or something like that, yeah. they listen to XFM for some music to have on in the background that's loud enough yeah. so they can hear it while they're hoovering. Yeah. I don't think our fans hoover. Well, true. I think true. you've got to have- Or shoot up, whatever. I think you've got to have a house <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. to hoover. I'll tell you what I do want though, some great music. They do indeed. They'll be saying, since you've been gone. See that? Oh, that's the sort of link I can do if we- quality. If we stay If you together. could cut out all the other drivel you speak, you'd be great on magic. I uh, know, uh, yeah. Um, you've got to have- Come on. You've got to, you've, I know, you've got a rainbow something, haven't rainbow. you? Rainbow. You've got a rainbow something. <laughs> oh! It's rainbow. <laughs> Well, I mean, for the last show, that song had everything. It's got, <laughs> it's got two guitar solos. Yes. It's got a key change. It's got bad grammar. Since you've been gone by <laughs> yeah. Rainbow, and that's for Camfield, the Prince of Rock. Yeah. He's going to be the king when Vance, you know, just hands over his his crown. Yeah. And you've still got that on XFM, so you know, don't worry about us going. Oh, you weren't. Oh, okay then. <laughs> No one cares. No one no cares. No one cares. This is our last show. Let's make it a good one. Let me give out the email address because I imagine there's gonna be a flood of emails. <laughs> saying, please, Carl, keep the team together. Yes. It's, uh, jono.coleman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Coleman's not a team. He's just a big lad. Yeah. Right, come on. Um, what do you mean, come on? I've got nothing. Ricky Dot Oh, Ricky Dot at XFM. Yeah. Or Carl Dot Pilkington, because you can do it throughout the week, you can do it throughout the two months. Mm -hmm. And, um, what's the, what's the phone number for XFM? 0207, is it 766 6000? And then just ask people through the car and leave a message on his voicemail. Yeah. Um, so email him a lot. 0207 766 6000, I think, and just ask for Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Little Carl Pilkington, little baldy mank twit. Uh, and say, please stay. Yeah. Please stay. Um, Carl, say something then. Oh, This is your last show. Say hello. What, right. are you, what are your feelings, Carl, so far? I mean, this, are you tearful? Are you upset? Not at all. No. Can't, can't wait for three o'clock. Sure. <laughs> See, it was interesting how Ricky was saying he only does it for the fun. I haven't even got that bit. Yeah. <laughs> I am paid peanuts to work Saturdays, yeah. which wrecks me weekend. <laughs> paid yeah. peanuts, you get monkeys. I have, <laughs> I have no fun. Yeah. Right? You're having and, a laugh. And what people You love is, this, you love this! You love me coming in and having a little chat beforehand and after. Yeah, but that's the funny thing, innit? Listeners just think, why, why does he get so moody about it, having Ricky annoying him yeah. just on a Saturday? Yeah. It's not just of a Saturday. Why? It's in the week as well. <laughs> well, and how, it's do, way I over you? The how do I annoy you? How do I annoy you? Daily. How wins. do I annoy you, Carl? So you can't if you be specific. Um, See, the first thing that springs to mind when I'm trying to work with Steve before saying, "Come on, let's you know find some interesting stuff to talk about." I think you were playing the accordion in the air. <laughs> was it the accordion? Oh, I mean, yeah. it doesn't really matter. They get the idea. <laughs> Although it I was... can't play the accordion, so it wasn't very good, was it? Where did you find an accordion? I just, I just was running out there, right? And then yeah, I- So the drum kit you started playing with. And then, yeah. then I had a loudspeaker and I put the accordion for the loudspeaker. Then it loud, those loudspeakers. They're the, amazing. My question is this, Carl. Do you honestly think that's gonna stop just cause we're not on air anymore? <laughs> he's not gonna see you on a Saturday, so he's just gonna come in even more often. Yeah, I can just drop he in. He won't bother me as much though. I think he will. And he'll have his fob taken off him, so he won't, he won't be able to just wander in. Of course I won't. So, what, they they're won't. not- you think they're- they're, they're gonna- they're, of course they're gonna let Ricky Gervais mm -hmm. walk in any time they want. Yeah, I might come in, might do a few trailers, might hang out, you know, with Andrew, going, hey Andrew, how's it going? He'd go, yeah, we're oh, having a bit of trouble, what do you think? i will say, lose that off the playlist, put that one on, sack then. Yeah. yeah? Let's have a little bit of feeder. Feeder. Forget about tomorrow. At least we're here today, Steve. <laughs> oh, the indeed. three of us for a, an hour and a half more. The last time ever possibly. It's up to little baldy head manky. Well, little Carl Pilking Todd. <laughs> a number of emails, Rick. Yeah. This is from Matthew Davis. I think he very much captures the mood of the email public. Uh, his, his email is just simply titled, GO! In the name of God, GO! <laughs> it says, why wait till three? 
why not leave immediately and stop subjecting us to this abject misery? Well, Carl did once when he had to get a train. Uh, of course. So, uh, that's never happened on radio before. But who knows? I mean, stay tuned. We might shoot off at, uh, at twenty to two. Or we might get better. We might get better. We might get better because we've done a bit of planning because I got Carl round last night. Really? To do some planning of the show, didn't I? And so we've-, we've Yeah, gone. I thought you were gonna be there, Steve. No, I wasn't talking about it. Yeah, well, I, I called him off and said, why, what we're doing? He said, well, you can come round and, you know, have a chat. Yeah. Maybe get some ideas and that for yeah. tomorrow. So I said, is Steve there? Yeah, Steve, Steve will be coming, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, go round. It's close- next- next to his flat. It couldn't- the pub couldn't be closer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright? Yeah. Uh, unless there was sort of spirits and that in the lift. <laughs> they couldn't have gone closer. <laughs> yeah. Alright? So turn up. You're not there. No. <laughs> He's lied. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, so I knew you wouldn't come out if it was just like you thought I was gonna muck around. I had to pretend it was work to right. get you out. So, you yeah. weren't there, Steve. No. Anyway, so he says, oh, come in the flat, you know, um, got, got an interesting book that, that you'll like. Okay. So I think, well, that's kind of work, you know, sure. he's trying and that. Yeah. yeah. So I go in thinking we're gonna get some, some good ideas and that from this book. Couldn't find the book. He looked for about forty seconds. Said, "Oh, I don't know where it is." And then, oh, come on, let's come in here. Let's have a wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sat in the lounge. Yeah. Right, sat there, just chatting to his, his girlfriend and that, just chatting. He comes wandering out in his underpants. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was comfortable. Yeah. I don't know if you were comfortable because we were sort of pulled up. <laughs> but yeah. Right between the crack. Right. <laughs> Looked like. Uh, okay. Probably like a gay sumo wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! And I did a little dance for you, didn't I? Because there was MTV on and I was doing a little dance. Dancing to Elton John's new one. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! And what did you say? What did you say when I was doing a little dance for you and my pants pulled up? Like, right? Do you remember what you said? No. You went, I, I poured him a drink, he was in my home, I'm entertaining him, he goes, are you sure you're not a bender? <laughs> <laughs> Is that any way to treat a host? I think it was Outrageous. the right time to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but we did do some work, didn't we? Because you then, you got confused and you said, he said he's, you know, oh god, it's like a child or a cat when it's confused. He went, Steve reckons, in ancient Greece, right, it was better to shag a bloke than a woman. And I went, well, yeah, I mean, that's th about the, the male being, uh, um, sort of a, a, a first class citizen, yeah. much better, wasn't it? An aspiration yeah, the, the to sleep with a beautiful Carl, man yeah. than a beautiful woman. Women were lower class citizens, yeah. so therefore men were seen as, uh, uh, as higher class. So to have sexual relations with a man was, there was no shame in that. No. In fact, it was looked upon and as And I said, well, it's, you know, ancient Rome, I said, um, you know, Nero, he used to, he'd sit in his big jacuzzi <laughs> and he used to get, you know, pretty boy men to just go into the water and just nibble at his testicles while he, he was having a watch. He didn't do that. He, he did! No. Yeah. And he's not a gay fella? No, well no, I mean, you know, I don't know about Nero, but I mean it wasn't, it wasn't a case of a big delineation between what was heterosexual and what was gay. It was just, you know, whatever you- So what, what did this fella do then? This one who was having his- Well he was, he was pretty much top, top boy, Nero, for yeah. a while. He was in charge. And uh, you know, and they, you did what you did what you're told. If uh, Caesar or, but why know. were people going round there? Why didn't they go? Oh. No, they weren't dropping in. <laughs> <laughs> they, it wasn't like the door was open. I was going to see what Nero's doing. It's not like when I pop in here to no, see you. No, yeah, normally what would happen is you'd say, "Come back to my place. I got a book for you." <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> pop in, but you'd come out it. in his pants. You'd, you'd Elton probably, John would be on. You'd have probably been like a delivery boy or a stable boy or something, you know. And you'd have popped round there, and you'd have gone there, right, Nero. There's, uh, there's the tablets of stone you wanted. And you go, Pilkington, why are you out here? Pop on, I don't know why he's French. <laughs> what, what is that? I don't know why he's French. Just pop under the water and nibble at my testicles and you'd have done it. Cause he was Nero. I wouldn't. He would have. Well, there's, there's no, no way I would have done. Yeah, well you would have. What if I done? I've dropped a pizza off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, you, you put under Nero's face in pizza. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, I'd, I'd say, I've done my job. Right? Yeah. That's not the sort of tip I wanted. <laughs> 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 no, he just said, get the little baldy chap to nibble on my testicles and you'd run the water. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it. No, well, you wouldn't have done it. Right. No, I wouldn't have done well, it. So. Uh, 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 can I just say this, Steve? Not only would you be nibbling his testicles, you'd have been going mad. You'd have been noshing him just for extra. You'd have had a 
You'd have been doing everything he wanted. You'd have been going, he'd have gone, I didn't ask you to do that. You'd have been going mm. mental. You'd have been chewing, slurping, right. smacking, poking. He'd have chopped, you'd have, you'd have gnawed his right. packet <laughs> off. you think you're eating Walker's crisps. <laughs> there'd be bubbles, there'd be blood. Oh, it'd be <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Beatles from the soundtrack to the Yellow Submarine, actually, and that's Hey Bulldog. On XFM 104.9, our last show, maybe. Me, Ricky, Steve, and little Carl. All right, Carl? But, um, that, that book, that, that wasn't a fake. Uh, it wasn't, like, just a ruse to get you back to show you me and dancing in pants to Elton John. It, it's, uh, uh, What was your girlfriend doing during that, instantly? I think she was just getting on with sort of, like, packing up sort of boxes because yeah, we were moving. She's, moving uh, sure. I, I don't think- Well, she's seen it all before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and the book was, uh, do you remember that book that I showed you? That, um, it was, um, a Man's Body, an Owner's Manual. And it's just, yes. like, loads of stats. And there's one in there- Yeah, it's kind of like a Guinness Book of Records of- Of men, yeah, yeah, there's one section there. There was, uh- Sorry, hang on, it's not a like Guinness Book of Records of men. <laughs> that just sounds <laughs> a little bit like you and I were sitting around your house <laughs> looking at a big book. Picture of men. The big it. man book. <laughs> the big man he book. He is yeah. a big man, isn't he? Yeah. He should be on the front cover. Yeah, it was a book more about the kind of physical body and Exactly, about yeah. Biology and, and yeah. social and, you know, s sex and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And but uh, we didn't which look is, at the sex. Which, which is where was, uh, uh, we got the uh, knob news for today from, right? This is, this is true, right? Um, I read that the. Oh! You left someone's eye out! Knob news! Nearly forgot the jingle. Yeah. Um, I read that the smallest ever. Functioning penis, right, was under three quarters of an inch when erect. Extraordinary. That is bad luck, isn't it? And yeah. it's a micro penis, so it's perfectly, perfectly scaled down. Just a little, just a little look at Carl's face. Well, come the fella have said, look, right, I'm not happy about it, <laughs> so don't, don't print it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the sort of press people want, is it? <laughs> there wasn't a picture of him. It was anonymous. They didn't read the book and, uh, at, at work the next day and go, look at this, Frank. What? Smallest ever penis, uh, half an inch. He didn't go, it's me! <laughs> he just went, yeah, loser. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's have a shower. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. He must have had to have a little jod with a pair of tweezers. Yeah, presumably. Because you couldn't even get a fist, I mean. No. That is bad luck, isn't it? Was he a good looking fella? What or? would you do, right, if, um, uh, uh, he'd invited you around and said, right, and he was like the king, right, and he went, oh, Carl, can you just go in there and just nibble at it? And you'd gone under the water, and you're just about to nibble at it, and you go, you come up and you go, that's tiny. Would you be disappointed or relieved? Right, well, that wouldn't happen. No! Carl, I'm saying if it did, would you be, would you be disappointed? Would you go, oh, that, I can't even get, I don't know where to start with that, or would you go, oh, thank God it's not a big one? You've got to remember that he's the emperor, so you've got to do what he says or he'll have you killed. What would you do? Would you would you go? Oh, I love lovely set of tackle, or oh, it's not as big as I wanted, or would you th yes. secretly think I'm glad it's not oh, big because I didn't want to because I'm not that guy. I'm not I'm not even gonna think about it because I wouldn't do it. I know I wouldn't do it even back then. <laughs> even back then, what do you mean? Well, when was when was when was Nero at, at it? What? what? <laughs> well, the Roman Empire was sort of like two thousand. Well, it stretched up for to years, about yeah years, yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. You'd have to. You'd have to. I always remember. Um, we're still doing knob news. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just the uh, knob, knob news extra. extra. Knob news extra. Excellent. Well, in um, you know, I didn't do that well at school and that, right? But we had biology, mm -hmm. and I didn't take uh, didn't take much of it in. But there was one day when, when it was about, you know, knob news and stuff. <laughs> Um, and it was all about how, uh, blood, you know, is what makes- Engorges. Yeah. The erectile tissue. Sure. Yeah, it was all about that. And, uh, there's this girl in our class called Paula, right, who was sat there watching it, and she fainted. You just heard her go, <laughs> oh! <laughs> and she hit the floor, right, cause we were all sat on top of the desk watching this. But I yeah. wasn't really, what, I wasn't that interested in that. No. Uh, I wasn't looking at it and that. But, uh, but Paula, right, she, she <laughs> fell over. <laughs> and the funny thing was, right- What was it, a video? Yeah, a video of like this, this <laughs> blood- Yeah. Doing, doing the business to yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this fella's member, sure. right? And, uh, she fell over, like, <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, what's up with her? <laughs> and the teacher was trying to like, wake her up and give her water and that. 
and it was really weird because <laughs> then the nurse came in and yet this video was still playing. <laughs> <laughs> and the nurse came in, what happened while she's seen this? Yeah. And you could hear like, you know, th 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 then it was going on to like sex education on the video. It was all done from start to finish. What yeah. happens? Da -da -da -da, and by the end, and she was still out cold by the time it got to like, and then they had a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And um, that just, that just reminds so me of it. So it then. seems to me that that but, was her sex that, education class. She fainted when the penis got erect, and when she woke up, a baby was born. That's yeah. probably what she thinks happens. She's yeah. wandering around now. And she the, 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 the whole class just missed out of it because they yeah, saw so someone. If she's ever with a bloke and he gets an erection, she just goes, "Oh uh, no!" Well, that's it. She was a bit of a class tart, really. That's yeah. why. Oh, was like, What's Carl, 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 she, Carl, she Carl, 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 Carl. No, she but. She was. That's that. Everyone was like, "What's up with her?" It's now. Not as she's not seen it before. But, just reminded me then. <laughs> Weird. But anyway, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I would be Anyway, yeah, well let's there. leave Nero aside. Probably. Yeah. The other thing in this, should we play a record and come back? Yeah. There's another yeah. interesting fact. There is some extraordinary facts in there. Yeah, yeah, well, there's more oh, facts. We're running over. It won't be knob news, it won't be knob news, there'll be all different types of news. <laughs> <laughs> Libertines, don't look back into the sun. On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, for possibly the last time mm. ever. I was coming in today, Steve, and I was walking just past, um, Shaftesbury Avenue, at the beginning of Shaftesbury Avenue, and, uh, it's sort of a little bit of a tramps corner going on there, mm -hmm. and there's a couple of tramps, proper, proper tramps, already had a few, and, uh, about sort of like 40 maybe, right, all that. That they could be 30, they could have a hard life, they probably have. But he was going, yeah, and for, and, uh, he's a f and, uh, Johnny's coming down, but, uh, Les isn't gonna make it. <laughs> and I think they're just planning their social, yeah. and meeting there. I just think that they, that's nice, that they've got, you know, they have a, they don't just drink by themselves. Yeah. They have a, oh, what we'll be doing tonight? I thought we'd get drunk and sleep in the zoo, we? <laughs> we did that last night. <laughs> but I just like the idea that yeah. they're, they're planning it. And yeah. they've got mates and they do stuff and they go, all right, how's it going? Well, you know how it's going. Yeah. I'm sitting next to you in a pile of pits. <laughs> you know <laughs> how it's doing. Do you think, I, I was also thinking, do you think they ever wake up, like, before they've had anything, like nine o'clock and go, oh, <sighs> I was pissed last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. But you were talking absolute rubbish. What was I doing? You were just going, I have all this, uh, You were just showing uh, it cars uh, walking in the street. You were joking. Was I, was it, was I really embarrassing? Yeah. Well, you were pretty drunk. I'll tell you this, yeah, I am but never gonna do that again. Oh, but at least I didn't make a pass at Dirty Agnes. <laughs> oh, God, what did I do? You were just going, yeah, please, yeah. <laughs> just love the idea they have no little, yeah. little conversations and that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I imagine one of them going, oh, I'm not coming out tonight, I've got no money. <laughs> Nor have we yet. Yeah. I'm just gonna go and dance. Just go and dance outside of McDonald's. Seriously, I, I only made 18p to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. You know what, uh, cause I always, you know, I've always had a, a soft spot for the homeless, but do you remember that time I was walking over to yours once and um, see there's the homeless people, there's those ones that, <laughs> they try to retain a certain dignity. Um, by, they won't just come up and ask you for money, They'll come up and maybe try and start a conversation oh. be before introducing the fact. <laughs> the fact that what what you despise and annoys you is the try that the thing they're trying to hold on to is a little bit of pride. <laughs> I know. And you, what would you want them to do? Well, just, be, like, just be crushed in a skip, going, "I'm just give me some money. No, look I at me." I just think, come out and say it. You know, come out and say it, but don't try and fool me because sometimes I feel like I've been tricked. I get annoyed because I feel like I, I didn't see you coming. You came out of left field, you know, Sorry, I didn't know you were a tramp. I imagine the fact that they're bare chested, apart from a blanket with their hand out, covered in sores, and no teeth is a clue that not they're this probably- one, Rick. Not really. This was one of those ones, you sometimes see them, the ones they're slightly older and they've got a full suit on. They wear a complete suit, like a pinstripe suit or something, with maybe trainers, <laughs> if maybe. <laughs> yeah. And I sometimes think to myself, you know, at what point in that moment before they finally left the house for the last time, did they think, well, what, well I'm gonna be homeless. I want to look good if I'm going to be. But happens, I'm sleeping rough. I but think it I'll does happen quickly. It sort of happen. It can yeah. happen in a matter of mm. days or weeks. Anyway, listen. I don't. I'm not begrudging the fact that he asked for money. That's fine. I just felt a little bit annoyed because I thought he was an ordinary person. Right. And he came up to me and he said nice to me, "Nice Go on. And he said to me, um, "Excuse me, mate. Have you got the time?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "Whatever. You know, ten past three. And he went, "Have you got any money?" And I knew that. I was annoyed, and and it annoyed me because I thought. <sighs> I should have known straight away. I mean, a homeless person, you know, I sensed it, sensed it straight away. Yeah. Excuse me if you got the time. I wanted to say to him, where have you got to be? Well, yeah. What appointments have you got? Well, no, maybe 
he, d he d goes to work, he starts begging at three o'clock. Mm. Yeah, he asked all that day, he goes, what time? They go, quarter to four, or whatever. You know what I mean? Then he goes, oh, give us some money. It's right. three o'clock. Right. He, maybe he has the mornings off. It yeah. might have been his, it might have been his day off. He was doing half day or, you know, shift work. Yeah. He might, you know what I mean? You never know what shift they're on. But I just on. think, when you see those people from shelter or from famine relief, in the street, they got to wear those kind of those little things over their clothes that yeah. say where they're from, or yeah. at least some kind of name tag. Yeah. So you know when you're stopped by them, you know what to expect. They got a clipboard. I know these homeless people who come out of there. They look like regular people. They come lurching out like zombies. You go, oh, you think this? That's, a, that's an attractive woman. She's just come over. Oh no, look, she's got a dog on a piece of string. I know, yeah. I just think they got to come out with that's it. They just come stuff. out of it. Just be yeah. honest. Be, be you know, be proud. Those people with a thing sometimes annoy me. It's where they stand right in the middle of the pavement. I have to zigzag, I have to mm. cross the road four times to get through them. Mm. It's like, it's like playing Getaway yeah. on video, avoiding all these up and down Oxford Street. You have to really, you know, they come out and um, worse than they recognise me. That's why I've got about eight standing orders now where I've been caught but and I'm I leave worried. the house and I'm, it's just like people are trying to take my money from me. <laughs> Between my house and the tube, there's just swarms of people trying to take my money from me. <laughs> at any cost. Carl's got his first little direct debit, haven't you? Five quid a week or something, quite a bit a month. Yeah, I've, I've Join some uh, something to help Africa out. Mm -hmm. um, I quizzed her for a bit. I mean, she came over and she was saying she, he was talking to her for about forty minutes. <laughs> yeah, just making yeah, well, sure yeah. your money was going right to the right place. Yeah, I was saying, you know, uh, why have I got to give you my bank details? This is the thing, and I was saying to her, I'm sure you'd make more money, right, if you just had a little thing that you put money in. I said, I, I want to help you out, right, but it's the fact I've got to give you bank details. And she's saying, no, this is the way we guarantee we make money, uh, and uh, you know. We can help places out because we could be out all day, and we could only earn like 50p. Whereas, yeah. you know, we know that it's worth us standing around. Yeah. So I was like, well, fair enough. So, so what's what's my money going to be doing then? And I think it's called uh, uh, care care of the world or something. Yeah. And she's saying we're giving them uh, money to buy hammers, and we're not just going to give them money to blow in and stuff. They've got to like work and. and they don't it. give them money. Well, whatever. what do you think of these people? <laughs> just like. Uh, <laughs> and these these drought planes. It's like a being... gift voucher for being you. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to buy a hammer. No, what what they, they go with the buckets and go. All right, and they throw it up and they go bundle. <laughs> yeah. She she was making out anyway, right? That she was nice enough. She was selling it to me. She said, you know, we give them the tools, and they feel good because they're building up their own place and everything. Mm. And uh, so fair enough, right? And now I've done that for two months. They've had a tenner off me already. <laughs> I'm checking it, making sure they're not ripping me off and that. Yeah. If I ever go to Africa and I need a hammer, <laughs> and there isn't one, yeah, I'll be livid. You'll be livid because <laughs> you know it is a lot of money. Sure, sure. Every, every month, fiver. Yeah. And you know, you're talking about people hassling you and that in the street. I actually moved flat. The last flat I lived in, I moved from there because of the the hassle. That really? Was, yeah, it was a high street, and you couldn't, like you were saying. You nip out for a loaf and spend about forty quid, yeah. <laughs> just just on people saying, "Give us the money for this." Some items, <laughs> tramps, heart attacks, old yeah. people, or whatever. It's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. so it, it ended up pushing me off that street. It was no, like, I, I can't handle this. It's, <laughs> get, it's getting crazy out there. They measure well those little stalls. Yeah. Hey, but listen, let's make the world a better place with a little bit of music. Oh, thanks. A bit very of Bauhaus. Yeah. <laughs> Give generously, people. Come yeah. On. Bauhaus's version of David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust on XFM 104.9. And Richard Gervais will be Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton, possibly for the last time. And as a special treat, <laughs> a return, sort of like a summer special, an end of term, well, a gift to the fans, Carl is bringing back Rockbusters. Oh. No. Do you want to explain it? Uh, Rockbusters is basically Blockbusters, completely ripped off, done with music, um, that may or may not be a cryptic clue, and may or may not be the actual band name, and may or may not be the actual letters he said they were in the first place. Do you want to sort of describe one though in case someone's a new listener? And, like, well, Exploding Pet was Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Okay. Ba basically, so. for those of you who are new to the show, this is the final show, uh, Carl reads out what he considers to be a cryptic clue. It's yeah. not a cryptic clue, it's just some words. It's just a yeah. string of words. Yeah. And from that, you are supposed to deduct the name 
of an artist mm. or a group or a band. Um, we've we've had things like the Jamaican fella swinging a fish round. That was de trout spinners. De trout spinners. So that's the sort of that's the level of intellect you are getting from Carl Pilkington. What was the Just one? Just do the competition. What? I was thinking you f- was it that she, she fell down Wet in Texas? Wetney Houston. She fell down into a puddle in Texas. On, yeah. Wet on a knee. Wetney Houston. Yeah, so you it said works, it twice, it it's not cryptic, it so not just right. do it. Come on. Right, so there's three of them and you email in your answers, we've got some good prizes today and that. Right. Well, um, let me tell you the prizes, let me tell you the prizes, they yeah. aren't bad. They're We're through it, because this, yeah. you know, yeah, 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 the, the, the yeah, yeah, competition's yeah. bad enough, let alone just listen to what, what's got he got? got three DVDs Brilliant. and six CDs. He's got the young ones and all that, lots of TV things, there's some great CDs, yeah, go on. Right, so the first one, uh, cryptic clue, um, this vegetable mm. started life down under, right? Mm. This vegetable started life down under, the initials K-O, right? K-O, this vegetable started life down under. Second one, um, the things that, uh, you normally find on the beach, right, have been found floating around the moon. <laughs> Right? Yeah. That's, uh, I think it's T.S. Uh, <laughs> you think it's T.S.? Yeah. You set the questions, but you're not sure. Um, so, the things you normally find on the beach have been found floating around the moon, right? And the last one, uh, well, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. <laughs> <laughs> right? He thinks they're great! Well, he thinks he's brilliant! Well, you know, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. Is it locked in? He did all that. <laughs> yeah. The what? initials there, FC. 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 Right? So you email in the answers, ricky.gvay, so xfm.co.uk. Sweet. It's uh, weird all that, uh, all that talk and that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that called. Excellent. What do you mean? No, just all that bling bling and all that, because I, I didn't understand it, right? So I did a bit of, uh, did a bit of research. Brilliant, that's what you should do if you don't understand something. Look yeah, it up. I mean, always scoop it I, I always do that, I yeah. always do that though, you know I do that. No, I'm yeah. giving you props for even doing it, Yeah, so. massive respect and big right. you up. Yeah, go on. But, um, it's all slang. Right? Oh, yeah. Is it really? Is it really? It's so it's not in the- uh, really? That's odd. No, I don't remember it being in Romeo and Juliet, but then- So yeah. you didn't- you didn't speak like that when you went to Oxbridge? What? Never mind. But no, I, uh, did yeah. a bit of research into it, right? Go and on. uh one of the things that they use yeah. is uh Oh, I was out last night, did a one eight seven. Yeah. That's a, a murder. Yeah. But why use slang, right? Because apparently one eight seven is police slang. Yeah. Well if you well, it's not slang, it's a it's a code. Well don't don't use what the police know you're talking about. Yeah, I don't think they do it with police around. Do they not? Probably not. Carry on then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always remember the uh, Cockney rhyming slang supposedly yeah. originated because, you know, East End villains or whatever would make up their own slang so that if they're overheard yeah. in conversation, then they won't know what they're talking about. But just look, you know, just look it up in some kind of Cockney rhyming slang. Book. Yeah, I like that idea of going, okay, where is he? Where's fingers? Well, copper, I'm going to tell you this. He's up the apples and pears. <laughs> exactly. well, I don't know what that means. Well, leave, leave, the, leave, the, leave the house then. Yeah. If you don't know that he's hiding up the apples and pears, you might as well shoot <laughs> off. Exactly. Well, I can't possibly figure that out, so I'll just have to shoot off. Yeah, where was he last seen? He was last seen with his trouble and strife. I don't know what that means. Okay. Well, you might as well shoot off then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a perfect code. Of course, though, uh, talking about Shakespeare, Shakespeare invented 1,200 words and slang gets in, so there are more and more words and slang soon becomes, you know, the norm. There's no, there's no not real words and real words, you know, do you know what I mean? They're, they're just as valid if they're common parlance, so they're, they all become part of the, or they fade away and they're, they're not used because they're a fad. Yeah, like was up. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's probably in the dictionary. That is, that, yeah, or, or soon to be. I was reading, uh, was it a couple of years ago, um, uh, you're gonna like this not a lot. Right. Got into the, yeah, it's sort of popular things got in there. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna like this, not a lot. Uh, Zigga Zig R, I think, got in or something. Oh no, girl power got in. Right, girl yeah, power as a, as a, as a, fra a common phrase. Yeah, I like oh, sorry, sorry, go on. No, 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 you have to, you mate. No, it's just, it's just that, with the slang thing, did I tell you I was trying to read that, that book about, uh, the governor? Oh yes. And that, that was full of that and it had a page on the front that you had to keep going to when, uh, you know what I mean, when, when he used a bit of slang, you had to sort of go, right, I don't know what he means. Glossary. Right. Just, uh, nip back, have a look. 
I thought you meant, when you said oh, there's a page at the front, I thought you meant the cover with his face on. I can't remember who I'm reading <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> is this the book that you nearly finished reading but you realised all the pages were in the wrong order? No. <laughs> 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 he bought a cheap book, right, a second, uh, a second shot, started reading, loving it, then he started reading about this bloke, and he went from jail to school, and then he looked <laughs> at the page numbers and they were all out of order. How annoying is that? <laughs> I mean, you never read books, do you? I never, never read one, right? And Suzanne, it was a week and we were going to Hastings because you two had done me head in, yeah. right? She said, I'm gonna take you away so you relax and what have you. So, ended up not relaxing because it was like putting a jigsaw together. Yeah. <laughs> I'd started reading it on the train, thinking, loving this. It's a really interesting story about this fella who, you know, didn't have a great life as a kid, starts getting into a bit of crime, what have you, turns out to be the governor. Mm. But it wasn't as easy as that because, like you say, it was started off at school, then he was in prison. And he's like, oh god, he started young. <laughs> and then, next thing, he's like married. And he's like, hang on. He's like twelve, and then he's, he's, <laughs> he's had a heart attack, <laughs> and then like, but I just thought it was part of the thing because I read chapter one, and then it did say chapter twelve, but I thought right, it's like that sort of done in that stylish way that everyone's <laughs> doing. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a biography? Uh, look at that, it went down. I was messing with the I medium. Was, I was born in the East End. Take one onion, <laughs> yeah. add some, uh, this is the like, uh, idea that an East End villain's gonna write his autobiography, but think, yeah, I'm just gonna play with the form a bit. I think <laughs> get quite postmodern with this. No, but, you know He's I mean? barely able to write, probably. Yeah, oh, you, you, you can say that about him, Steve, I wouldn't. I think he's an educated man. Go on, next car. But, uh, yeah, just because it was like two for a tenner, that shouldn't be like, Oh well, you you know you got a, you got a good offer. So no, that's rare. That it, it, I'm yeah. sure the bloke selling it did not know that the page was out of order. Let's face it, Carl, you read it and didn't realise. Yeah. So you can't I really love blame him. You got almost half the <laughs> way through before you realised. Oh, no, no. Yeah. But anyway, you know. still that a teacher and that's put you off books for life, hasn't it? Well, I don't I don't like getting into books now. I just read snippets of information. Play record. Play record. No, I'm just going to tell you about a bit of. Information that I was reading. Okay. And I can't. Well, we play. No, no, I've got time for a bit of drivel before we play next tune. Well, I'd rather hear a tune and come back for drivel because I think people are tuning in for drivel. So let's tease them. Okay. Let's have a record. Then some absolute shite from <laughs> Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Look forward to that. Long view, and further. I love that one on XFM one hundred four point nine. Mr. Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right, Carl, what did you learn? Right, uh, like I say, I don't like reading books, there's too much to words. take in. It's too much I word. I'm busy in that. Yeah. Um, I don't like reading books, actually, but yeah. go on. So, but I uh, have done, <laughs> so go on. Right, so, I was looking in this magazine, right, and it was more about, do you know, I'm, I'm not that impressed with Einstein and Newton and that lot. No, what should you be? What have they ever done? Go on. No, but, you know, you know the fact. You see, the the Columbus thing. He's another one, isn't he? Who got a bit of praise for <laughs> finding America? Yeah. And it's like it would. Someone else would have come across that at some point. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and yet, news this week, they've found two new types of frog. Right. <laughs> no one's making a fuss. And look how small they are compared to what he bumped into. And that's what I'm saying. People make a big deal out of. All these people who are finding stuff, right? Yeah. So the next person. I, I, I mean, it's, uh, my head's buzzing, but I can't be bothered. I actually can't be bothered. Don't think this reaction's a good reaction. I don't know where to start with this drivel, but carry on. Right. So anyway, the next fella who. The I'm next always... fella. I d I, see, I don't know. You talk in riddles. The next fella I'm going to talk about, Go Einstein. On, yeah. Right. Everyone raves about him all the time. Yeah. Right? So I'm trying to get into my head. Yeah. Like, why is, why is amazing and that. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, did a bit of reading up on him in this science magazine. Yeah. Right? Now, I read it, it's only, only, a, you know, I don't know, 200 words, whatever, trying to get across what he worked out. But I read it last night. Is it relativity like, you're talking about? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, to so say, yeah, like, I just made that word up. It, it, you heard that's, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his biggest yeah, Okay, so the 200 words, as far as you recall. So anyway, so I read it and I was like, I don't, I don't know what, what, what is going on about here, right? So <laughs> Suzanne was with me, I said, can you read this? She said, I'm watching Sex and the City, yes. right? I said, right, but can you read it and explain to me 
what I don't understand here. She says, well, I'm, I don't understand. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's great. It's like, she's thinking, I, d I haven't got kids. Yeah. And yet he still wants me to help with his homework and yeah. I'm watching telly. Yeah. I've been at work all so day. She said, look, go in the bedroom, read it out loud to yourself. Maybe it make more sense if you read it out loud. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I said, right, I'll go and do that then. And it was good because it was cool in there anyway, right? So <laughs> I went in there. <laughs> so read it out, uh, twice. Went back and I said, I don't get it still. <laughs> So she said, right, wait ten minutes, and I saw it out. So I was sat there looking at it, trying to work it out before she had to look at it. I was like, no, I forget this. Now, what he was saying is, yeah. if you send a man to the moon, yeah. right, Yeah. he was saying uh, to the fella in, in the rocket, yeah. it would seem like twenty years to him. Yeah, not the moon, but yeah. No, it was, that's what it said, it said the moon. Well, it wouldn't, because it's only about... Uh, no, but listen, listen. So, it took 20, 20 years to the fella, yet people who were on the Earth, it would seem like 2,000. Yeah, because cause time is relative, not... not. I don't... What What do you mean? Right. Well, the, well, listen, the fact is that it's, it's tending towards the speed of light where it really makes a difference. They've even done it with atomic um, uh, clocks, where they've... Uh, sent one up, uh, even in Concord, and it's like point not one of a second difference. What, what is the watch? Yes. Yeah, because uh, uh, greater speeds. But why does speed affect how a watch works? Right, I don't well, think this is conversation... Because, look, speed I, is... Speed sorry, is, Scott, I mean, just what what I mean, moment. Steve. Right. See what I've done. I don't think this is a conversation to be had on a Saturday afternoon on a no, radio show. but I'm just saying, though. It's not, it's not me, is it? It's it is you. you. You went quiet, Steve. No, because- You're having problems Because there. I'm not gonna be able to explain it to you- I would explain it to you in a light, frothy way. It's, it's, it's speed equals, basically velocity equals distance over time, when velocity, uh, doesn't change, and nor does distance, <laughs> time has to. That's his theory. Mm. Yeah? Well, we just got What's your point then, again? Car? What's your I'm, point? I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, Because you don't understand so it, it's, it's like, worthless. I was trying to explain to Newton. Uh, that basically formulated the, you know, the, the laws of the universe, uh, the three laws of the universe. Uh, uh, even playing snooker, I'm trying to drop something. I was going, well, equal and opposite reaction and all these sort of stuff, right? And, um, and he was going, what did he do apart from the apple on his head with the gravity? And I went, well, what do you mean? And he went, well, what, why was it a problem? If we had been floating mm, round, yeah, yeah. I'd have called him in. But since we're not, we don't need him. Yeah. That's what he said. Play a record. Yeah. You're a buffoon. So there's these two new kinds of frogs, you say. You're joking. What, a monkey had a hat? The <laughs> monkey had a voice. I believe in a thing called love by the darkness on XFM 104.9. Last show. Possibly the last ever show. It's up to the K-Man. Little Pilky, Baldy Pilky, little whingy Dimo Manco, as he's called his Latin name, Dimus Mancoid. All right, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're gonna miss this, aren't you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Good show though. Enjoying the last show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's all right, and uh, you know, I hope it gets better because uh, Telegraph are listening today. What the Telegraph, the paper. Yeah. Why? Do, what do you, are they? Why do you say that? Just uh, Jenny, the PR woman, said to me yesterday. She said, uh, just you know, do some good topics and that, so you don't have to worry there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what do you, what, they phoned up to say, uh, hello, it's Telegraph here, we'll be listening tomorrow. I don't know, I don't know what they, what they're doing. They're Are they doing a review of it or something? I don't know. Why would they do that? With, there's no reason to. Uh, I, I'm a bit, uh, why didn't you mention this earlier? Cause well, I well, well, minute, what, no, so the Telegraph have said, uh, we'll be li why would they call up to say we'll be listening? It's because a free said, country. Because they said they'll be listening, but also, can you make sure you record it, because if we can't listen to it because of the pirate stations that are on at the weekend, because it affects our right. signal and stuff. Whoever's listening must listen and know there's a problem with pirates, and they said, can you- Well, they're probably just doing a feature about radio shows or something, then. They're gonna tear oh, us to well. shreds. They're gonna- they're, I mean, yeah. listen to- sorry, seriously, the drivel we've talked today. I mean, uh, what are they gonna make of it? That's, well, a, that's no, a broadsheet I, I, newspaper. I, I think I know what Monday's headline's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be like, you know, they're gonna forget about the power cuts. It's not gonna be about, you know, the inquiry or terrorism or anything. It's gonna be, no more to knob news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's gonna, oh. they're gonna love that. I mean, I, seriously, I, I have a little bit of self-respect. 
And if I'd known something, quality, a quality newspaper was going to be listening, I wouldn't have turned up today. Because, mm. I, I mean, I'm an award winner, you know, and I'm a respected television writer. And I've, you know, won awards, sort of classy. Don't worry, though. And Don't worry. And li- what have we talked about? Knobs. We've had the worst quiz on radio. Mm, yeah. We've had you trying to explain mm. relativity. You didn't even understand what that word meant. You, I don't think you recognise the word. You read There's that article. Words, t- you read that article four times, twice out loud. <laughs> why you could, th- where you could hear Sex in the City music, right? And yet you, that I, I, mu- that word might have been a clamp instance. You yeah. hadn't heard it before, so I don't know. Do you look between the lines? Do you actually look at the words? No, there's too many words, though. <laughs> <laughs> the Telegraph are gonna love that. Which way there's up loads you... of words. The Telegraph have got loads of words. I Which... mean, it's covered with it, words. Which way up do you hold the magazine when you read it? <laughs> no, but there is too many words. I mean, yeah. 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 people, are they upside down? There's, 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 I mean, yeah. There's too many words. There is too many words in the world. Do you know what this one means, right? Go this on. is one I learned the other day. Uh, I think it's, uh, ant- Antidoean. No. What does that mean? Old. Sorry, how do you spell it? Don't know. It's <laughs> of course you don't. Antidoian. No, I've I've never heard of that word. It, it, it mean it means old. But the annoying thing is, it takes longer to say, um, and it's the fact that if you. But where do you where do you where do you hear that word and in what context and? Someone told me about it. I was talking to someone about long words and that because you mentioned something when we were out drinking, and I said to you, "Why did you say that then? What what word does that mean?" And then you had to explain it, and I said, well, you didn't have to say that, you could have just said blah blah. But can I say, Steve, I wasn't sort of trying to cut him out or being pretentious, it must have been just a normal word in my vocabulary that he didn't know. Wait a minute, what, vocabulary pretentious? I- like, <laughs> you lost me. <laughs> you lost, you lost, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell I you what. I don't think you're scared by syllables. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just- I'll hmm. tell you what, though, um, uh, I was gonna do a feature about this, it's funny you should say it, I was gonna do a feature, my next feature I'd written down is How Good the Telegraph Is, the newspaper. Yeah. It's bloody brilliant. I love it. Cause oh. it's informative, um, it's impartial, it does this research, good. I think it's a lovely layout, the, f- the photographers are brilliant. Oh. Um, I love- do you know what, I like the bloody font! <laughs> I love <laughs> the bloody font! Oh, do you mind something else? I mean you say what? it's sort of, you know, I mean if there's any bias at all, I mean, there isn't because it's apolitical, but um, I bloody love the Tory party. I love- wow, well, let's not, let's not go into great. it, but I mean, but I, I mean, love- I just like the Tory- I just like the journalism and the- the size of the paper, right? do, 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 I like the way they're fair, they'd never- they'd never like, uh, you know, slag us off. No, no, but also so, I think it's because they understand that, you know, we don't really care and so we can't be really blamed for anything they hear on the radio. No. It's not really our fault, it's and, more sort of and, and, and anything we said that was like, you know, a bit nasty or stupid was- was probably sort of like some clever sort of ironic postmodern- so, Yeah. Satire. Player record. Yeah. Brilliant yeah. telegraph. It's, it's, it's really fairly priced, don't you think? I think it's too cheap. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the, uh, the cult there. She sells sanctuary. Um, on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Now, if the Telegraph are, um, listening, and they're, they're you know, they're, whoever it is, they're writing their article, and they're, they're coming up with sort of words like cheap, smutty, um, low, low brow. brow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Le- uh, in, in our defence, could I just say that we're pandering to our listenership? Yes. You know, I mean, th- this, this station, Draw, I mean, w- without exception, the people who work here, the executives, the DJs, are alcoholics, mm-hmm. drug users, yep. sex offenders. Check the register. You know, They're and we're there. trying to fit in with that for two hours a week, so we really have to sort of really bring it down. Seriously dumbing down. Um, but if you want, we, we should do our- stuff. We do Well, we do our normals, like we talk about usually. Tits. When we, well, no. yeah. Satire. Yeah. Satire is what you mean, satire. political satire. Social political. and political satire. Yeah. If you listened any other week, that's what you would have heard. Well, me and Steve are sort of like quite, you know, political animals and, and, uh, you know, oh, Proust. <laughs> oh. I love him. Oh, I wish he'd, I wish he'd resign as governor of, uh, yeah. France. Have you read Martin Amos's new novel? I love it. It's all, it's so... Brilliant. Lovely. Very long. Um, so, uh... Oh, politics though. I mean, what do you make of politics, Rick? Um, I, I'm sorry, I was just... Planning on going to the English National Opera tonight to yeah. see to that see, brilliant um, Tartuffe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, politics is brilliant. It's my yeah. favourite thing. Say I, something. I, say something political. satirical and comical about, say, John Prescott. Oh, he's got. 
Uh, stop eating pies, Prescott. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't like to be him about now. <laughs> so, that's, that's the sort of stuff- What do you make of George W. Bush? He's a bit stupid, isn't he? Well, th that's the dangerous thing. He's the most powerful man in the world, and I just think- I, I hope he's sort of- he thinks about stuff he does first. <laughs> oh, please, please, please. So that's- So that's sort of wise as well as- as well as comic. I thought of something about Bush as well. Go on. But it's- it's about his name and a woman's funny. Oh. So I was gonna bring those two together- I think it's try... fine though. I don't think that can- I think that's still quite highbrow because you've incorporated Bush. Uh, which mean- meaning the president. I mean, funny as well. <laughs> um, so I think we're pleasing both. <laughs> we got both camps. Um, <laughs> camp. That reminds me of something. I know. Yeah. So that's so if you're listening, Telegraph. Um, David Telegraph. That is brilliant. Sort of thing we're you're brilliant. That's sort you're of thing we're able to do. Too many words for Carl. But what about some adverts? I'd love to buy the Telegraph. Excellent. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Stop. On XFM one hundred four point nine. Well, if the Telegraph are listening, they'll be- they'll be loving the music. Oh, that's great music. They've been loving Knob News. Uh, coming up, Telegraph, just to keep listening because Monkey News is coming up. Mm -hmm. And should we do the results of Rockbusters, the- the worst quiz- The on, best quiz, the best quiz. Best quiz, oh, that, yeah. On radio. Do that shortly, although, um, probably you're thinking, Rick, um, isn't it time that we do our usual roundup of what's been happening in the news? Yeah. Which we always do every week. Yeah. Uh, we always do something, which is, I mean, basically, if you're listening and you're a new listener, say you work at a newspaper, we always try to be informative, just try and put stuff out there that just educates people, informs people. What are you people. thinking? Well, I said Monkey News is coming up, but what have yeah. you got? No, I was just looking on the net there and just found a couple of quite important news stories, probably worth mentioning. Um, policeman caught photographing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh. It's just the phrasing, I suppose. It's, it's a headline. Policeman caught photographing up woman's skirt. <laughs> now um, he wasn't up there taking a picture <laughs> of Big Ben. No. He wasn't going, can I just sit up here? I'm just gonna take a picture of that, <laughs> that seagull over there. No. He was facing the camera up a woman's skirt. <laughs> he was indeed. Right. Uh, a policeman in Japan is facing disciplinary measures after he was caught photographing up a woman's skirt <laughs> with a hidden camera while on duty. Uh, the 42-year-old sergeant, who's not been named, used a digital camera to secretly snap the shots when the woman was reporting a stolen bicycle. So he was actually- He was actually doing his proper job. He'd obviously thought to himself, I'll bring him a digital camera today, on the off chance a beautiful woman comes in to report a crime or robbery, I'll have it ready, I'll have it positioned, you know, yeah. in such a way. But this is interesting, this is how he got caught, okay? The woman became suspicious after she saw a flash go off. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, this Not a secret at all. <laughs> Sorry, did I just see your shoe? Your shoe just seemed to just spring into life. There was light. There was light. Yeah, I think I've had some. I, someone set fire to some magnesium that was <laughs> no, on the no, end of it. It no, won't happen only, again. But it's only you and I in here, and your shoe was just yeah. suddenly lit. Why are you standing like that? Why is your shoe just sort of like between my feet? There's no reason. There's no reason. Just, stand. just do, where? What did the bike look like? Flash. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you taking pictures of my no. family? No, 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 no. And no, I'm not. And you should be wearing knickers anyway. Well, how do you know that? What? How did you know on that? How did I know what? The, I'm not wearing any- I didn't know you, I don't know what you've got up there. Well- I don't know what it looks like, and I never- there's no way I could. <laughs> of course, that, that would be- it would be the roughly that conversation in Japanese. I know, yeah. Do yeah. you know, um, you just mentioned there about, sort of, no knickers and that. <laughs> Is it gonna be your Auntie Nora? No, 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 no. Right. It's just, you know, like, the- the last flat that I lived in, I always had a good view across the road and I could see, uh, he was the hairy, hairy. There was the hairy Chinese. Well, not kid, hairy Chinese kid. He was just a Chinese kid, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Running Because that's rare, isn't it? Hairy Chinese kids are very yeah. rare, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There's only one official sighting, isn't <laughs> there? Yeah. In one of those uh, shit little magazines that you buy. Uh, yeah, he was running around in his underpants. Did you, me. sorry, you just swore ironically. I mean, I imagine if there's any newspapers listening, you did that. Because he's sort of jokey and. Yeah, yeah, yeah go yeah, on. Yeah. That's not swear. And there was on. the old woman who didn't move. She was just sat there reading the book all who the time. Who we think possibly died and no one came around for weeks, yeah. But, and now I've moved, right? Mm. And it was quiet for a bit. I always look at what view I'm getting, sure. right? Uh, looks across and it was just sort of empty, sort of flats ready for people to move in and yeah. that, right? Anyway, people are in there now, <laughs> right? Um, and they've put all the furniture in, but yeah. I haven't put any curtains up, oh. right? So anyway, I'm, I'm sort of washing up, just having a, having a look out the window, yeah. right? Uh, girl sort of, uh, wandering about, you know, knickers on. Right. With no knickers on. You mean no naked? Knickers. Well, she had a bra on. Right, but, okay. But, uh, she was no probably looking for a knicker. So, I thought, oh. And I don't know how long I was looking. No. Right. But anyway, she looks across. Oh, God. I think she spotted me. Yeah. I think, oh, God. I felt really bad. Yeah. 
I said to Suzanne. Sorry, is this some sort of Peeping Tom confession while the telegraph <laughs> are listening? <laughs> I've no idea. Well, it's, it's not- that's the thing though. Peepington. I, if- if I was peeping, she was peeping as well, cause she was looking over. Works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, but- but yeah, yeah, all she could see of you was your bald head. Yeah. No, no, but And your hands moving as you were washing up. <laughs> <laughs> and some <laughs> white looking substance <laughs> rotting up. Particularly stubborn stain on this yeah. glass. Yeah. Oh god! <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine if she looked across. I'm assuming <laughs> the sink is lower but, than the window. But but did, didn't she just like, just cover up or something? Or she looked back and go, oh you're looking at- you're looking at funny. Well, <laughs> the thing I did- What? I thought, oh, just sort of drop me boxer short. Cause I what? thought- What? Well Suzanne said, what are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, just, just, just so they can see me cheeks of me. What are last. you talking about? No, they s because I thought, if she thinks I'm ro walking about in the nude as well, then we've both got something out of it. Carl! This sounds like, this sounds like a bad excuse in court. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. This is- <laughs> Or the plot of a film on Channel 4. I mean, this, this is like the doctor who got done, right, for exposing himself to a patient, and set, and brought, and then, then painted that little thing um, that you look down their throat at pink. Yeah. And going and going, this is what they saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, so sorry, you immediately, so you were looking at a woman dancing around naked, right? So well, the, the only thing you could do was immediately <laughs> drop your boxer shorts. So she looked across, saw you fully clothed, saw you took your no, boxer shorts. No, she shot. wouldn't have done because it's sort of just the top half and the sink's at a side angle, so I was sort of looking out. So, this she, is wouldn't genius. Have shown, so she wouldn't have seen your trousers then anyway? No, she did. I, I moved in front of the window. So more. you then <laughs> made them. <laughs> <laughs> you actually climbed <laughs> in front of the window. Oh, this is amazing! So you climbed in front ah! of the window uh, to show oh, off no, your, your, it wasn't your naked obvious. lower half. Su Suzanne said, what are you doing? And I, I said, bet she did! <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? So I, I sent you in here to clean up. What are you up? doing? I'm just, I'm just taking my trousers down and standing by the window. <laughs> Why? Because there's a naked woman across the road. What do you think I'm doing, Suzanne? I'm exposing um, myself while looking at some free leave funny! It, leave it, leave What's it. up with you, Suzanne? Leave it, leave it then, leave it. Christ! Are we, are we doing Rockbusters or Yeah. Oh, she sent you in there to read up on Einstein. <laughs> 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 A final question. What did the woman yeah. across the way? What yeah. happened? What, what was her reaction? I didn't look again. I just thought oh. you've, you've seen a bit of action as well. We're both happy. Let's let's leave it. Brilliant. So, so were you waddling around like a penguin with your trousers around your ankles? Yeah. I just was walking about, and Suzanne said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'll explain to you in a bit, but don't look out the window <laughs> because then it's excellent." Obvious. Then yeah. her, then he sees that she calls her husband to look at Carl walking around naked. He goes, "Oh, she's got a quick, Suzanne, get him out. <laughs> yeah. There's only one with England. Get some more friends. <laughs> They've got one more." Anyway, brilliant. Right, right play a record. So, and come back to Rockbusters and Monkey. News. We haven't got enough time. Do rock busted. Oh, God almighty! Hanging round of Transformer. A little bit of Lou Reed. Nearly finished. Nearly finished. Twelve minutes until we are no more. But don't Devos. forget, Monkey News still to come. Well, yeah, don't forget that. Monkey News still to come, but now the answers to... Rockbusters, Rock right, do the clues. Alright, the uh, first clue was uh, this vegetable started its life down under. Uh, the initials were KO. That was Collie Osborne. Alright, <laughs> Collie Osborne. <laughs> the second one. No, was no, no, no what, what, what are we letting that go? Yep, we haven't got time, Rick. Well, it's just, no, it's, it's, it's just not the word. We haven't got time, Rick. Also, cauliflowers don't start their, uh, don't start uh, down under. They're 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 on top. It's not like carrots. No, or down under is in Osborne. Osborne, it was born, born in, in Osborne. Osborne. Right. Right. Collie. I thought you meant started. But Co her name's not so, Collie. Right. The second one was uh, the things that you normally find on the beach. Right. They, they've been found floating around the moon. That's the space shells. Right, specials. This is rubbish. I mean, I, I, I tell you, no, this isn't even funny though. Special. I mean, they're no good at all. Cryptic. It's not cryptic. It's wrong. Cryptic. It's we not cryptic. cryptic. The last one was, uh, well, if uh, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. Go on. That's FC fifty cent. Right? What? Fifty cent. It was fifty cent. I didn't receive any, so. So. <laughs> Collie Osborne. Collie. Her oh. name's not Collie. Her name is not Collie. Doesn't matter. Well, one. Well it doesn't matter. Well done to Gina Ferry, who has emailed in. She's got all those answers right. Yeah, just, and, uh, just emailing your address and that. Mm. Yeah, email that. You're such an idiot, Carl. 
As are you, Gina. <laughs> Loosen your hold by South. That's great. On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly it. Rick, can I just say thanks to everyone who's emailed in over the weeks and months we've been on because uh, obviously we're too lazy to even send them a response or a reply. Um, but we do appreciate. We do appreciate it. Yeah, same with the, all the letters and stuff that we, you know, we can't. Yeah, people we, send stuff in all the time and they say they like the show or they don't or they contribute little ideas and stuff and we do read them and we do appreciate it. It's just that we, uh, when you've got someone like Carl Pilkington in the studio. You just need to pick his brain constantly, and you've got re no real time for admin. But uh, thank you for sending in all the nice uh, letters and responses and stuff. Well, finally, um, we should let people know that next week, for the uh, foreseeable future, uh, it's Adam and Joe. Brilliant. Oh, brilliant. And they're standing in for us this time next week. Well, you say standing in, but possibly replacing full time, unless Carl Pilkington decides to change his mind and come back. What do you think, Carl? Mm. Uh, you've enjoyed today's show, I know. Yeah, it's been all right. Yeah, you, any t attempted to come back when we uh, when we finally mm. return? Maybe a little rest to make you sort of like forget how annoying I am. Cause no, that, because that that, that just... is my secret weapon. Sometimes you know, because it's the thing that you can um, you can f uh, uh, fleece a sheep as many times as you want, but you can only skin it once. Sure. So what I do. It's sort of like, I, I feel sure I never actually look, look, completely lose a friend. I tease them and talk to them to the point where they're gonna leave me, and I go, oh, anyway, how are you doing? I go, um, I sort of confuse them. Yeah. And that's what I've done with you today. And I think, over the next couple of months, where I'm sort of nicer on the phone, I'm not squeezing your head, you'll go, he's all right, Rick, what yeah. the, and then, and I, then, then I'll get you back in it. it. And, and then, then I'll, I'll absolutely exactly rip you to pieces oh, again. I'll be doing with. Oh. So, but hopefully, and also, um, unlike a lot of my friends who are clever, um, I don't have to worry about you because you will forget. You'll yeah. I mean, because you've got such a, you've got a tiny little intellect. And <laughs> exactly. I'll, do you know what I mean? You'll forget Steve? this conversation even took place. <laughs> 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 anyway, it's what everyone's been waiting for. for it's what Carl time. exists for for the last time. It's the, it's monkey news. Play so. the jingle. <laughs> oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news. Right, you th are you, uh, familiar with Undreth Monkey? Keep the talking. Undreth Monkey? Undreth. Like, yeah, like as in like, one more than ninety-nine. Hundredth. Yeah. The one hundredth monkey. Yeah, are you, are you familiar with that? No. No. Oh. Uh. Anyway, thanks, that was well, the we'll, news. We'll, we'll uh, that, next then. week, Adam and Jeff. what do you mean you're gonna leave that? Well, I thought it was a popular phrase or something. <laughs> what, hundredth monkey? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean a popular phrase? What, what, why? What? Cos you're gonna do songs and phrase with it next week. We've said it once before, hundredth monkey. <laughs> no, it's just, uh, it says the expression hundredth monkey. Well, do it anyway, what's from? the story? Well, it's from the 1950s, right? Mm. And the way that they got it because um, <sighs> they were following some monkeys about, right? And they started. <laughs> Who was? Who was? Who was? Journalists. Oh yeah, why? Oh yeah. <laughs> Just to see what what they're up to. Right? Okay, so they're following some monkeys around. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? What a documentary. Anyway, one of them. Come on! Come on! One of them washed some potatoes. Right, okay. Right, let's leave that, right? Let's leave- Wait a minute, what's the word? Come on! A monkey washing potatoes? Can we leave that one? No, we cannot! You've got to do it now! They're following a- what is it? Like, sort of a family? Is it a family of monkeys or It was just one chimp and it was washing a potato and they thought, that's a bit odd. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It turns out that- that- that ended up teaching another monkey- Yeah. How to wash a potato. No, they do it, they do- they go down and wash them in the sea. Cos they like- they like the taste of salt. And it's- 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 They pass on- When it got to the hundredth monkey, right? Even though it hadn't been taught how to wash a potato- Yeah. It automatically knew- it knew what to do. What do you mean? What do you mean? It- it was in them. It was in them that, that they knew that when they get a potato they had to wash it. That isn't the monkey news, I'm just- I'm just saying that's where the expression comes from, but you don't even murder that, so. Well, there's a couple of things there. That it could be a, a, another upshot and, you know, an I instinct is- is part of your genetics and anything else. Washing a potato. But- but you can't pass on acquired characteristics. So that's nonsense if you mean that, uh, someone was taught they had a child and it knew it. There's no- there's no chemical memory right. as such in- So that wasn't even monkey news? No, the- the monkey news, you know, we've- we've covered a lot of stuff. There was sad- there was sad- sad stuff, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, there's some funny stuff in there, you know. Yeah, yeah, Um. Do like monkey rock, news! Playing robbers and that. Um. Football team. A monkey football team? Yeah, in, mm -hmm. uh, Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. Uh. Got all the, uh, got all the team members here, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> all the different things. Um, little goalkeeper. Apparently he's on transfers from some other club. But the bit that got me attention is, apparently he's a holder of PhD of physics. 
<laughs> don't have a look at that. Well, the goalkeeper. Yeah, just the goalkeeper. The, the others haven't done that much. <laughs> the others haven't done that much! <laughs> well, I believe that he's got better exam results than you, Carl, but I don't believe he's got a PhD in physics. Good Obviously. Guy. Do you know what the name of the team is? Coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh! So if the Telegraph are listening, that is the sort of quality entertainment you get. Well, you don't let's, anymore. Let's just put a song on there. Yeah, that's the end. What, Goodbye, what, everybody. What, what have a, leave? have yeah. a lovely summer. Yeah, the rest of it. And, uh, we might see you in October. We might not. It's up to Carl Pilkington. Oh, Chances of sleep. So call 0207 766 6000. Ask for Carl Pilkington. Or email him. What's this? Or, this is uh, Tim Buckley to end with. I think you'll enjoy this. It's called Once I oh, Rose. Andrew Phillips. Call Andrew Phillips. See ya.